Where the fuck you been, cocksucker? What's with the questions? You don't I've fall, been here. You got the yarmulke on. You got the flying Jew shirt on. I gotta have the yarmulke on. The girl on. is moving up to Van Nuys. You fucked up. You had her 15 miles away. No, it's good. And I now fu- you got her up there. Now the mother's gonna cook for you four nights a oh, week. Oh yeah. You over there watching Telemundo, asking her what your horoscope is. <laughs> no, I was I was terrified last night. I'm um, thank God because I, I we went and saw uh, How Fury. Was it? How was it? Great. It was a lot a of time. It, it was really violent. It's super violent, but it was good. Brad Pitt's always what good. Mean, they shoot people. No, but they like they shoot people and their heads explode. It's fucking it's, tremendous. It's, it's good. It's tremendous. But I was dropping her off and I had to get gas and I pulled in. I, I knew immediately I wasn't supposed to be there. Like there was hookers and drug deals going on, and I asked her if it was okay. And she said yes. And then when I got back in the car, she was laughing. She's like, "This is the worst part of Inglewood. Like even the Taco Bell drive-through has bars on the window." How'd the hooker look? Not good. All right. It was Sunday night. You want to get that phone on? You you would let her lick your fucking nuts or not? It was one of those. I don't, I like black girls, but it was one of the black girls oh, with okay. blonde hair. And I'm like, uh, uh-huh. little Kim looking motherfuckers. Yeah, All that's right. not that's not my style. Miami was fucking tremendous. My last three weeks were great little weeks, and I'm very happy that. Unfortunately, I could go out and do comedy in these cities, but Miami was fucking great this time. I saw somebody I hadn't seen in fucking thirty years, you know, and they had my shit. They saved my shit. What shit? My godmother said, he's going to come and get this stuff. Even if I'm dead, he's still going to come and get this stuff. Your Centuria stuff? Everything. I had T-shirt. I, I, it was just amazing. Oh, any, any pictures? No, but pictures. A couple pictures. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, oh. a couple pictures. Just, uh, I saw Carlos Perez, a dear friend of mine that... Wait, was it Zoraida? No, no, no. It was uh, oh, okay. Mercedita, this, this chick. But I saw... Uh, a friend of mine named Carlos Perez, who on Sundays we used to buy a ten dollar bag of Crystal THC, me, him, and Sabatino, a three dollars, ten dollars for a ten dollar bag of Angel Dust, and we'd buy six Michelobes, and we'd sit at my mother's house, snort it, listen to Led Zeppelin too, like fucking soldiers in training, and then I saw Martin Perez, and Martin Perez's father was a driver for Batista. Okay. And I grew up with Martin Perez, and here's the like I when I see these people, you think of the most obvious thing that happened between you and them, like as a child. One time he lit a tree on fire that everybody had lit on fire, and he's the only one that got busted. But the weirdest thing that happened with Martin Perez was one night the New York Mets played against the North Bergen High School faculty. This is 1976, maybe 75. I didn't have hair on my dick. I was a young kid. We walked out of the basketball thing, and there was a fist fight. And we got pushed around a little bit, and we ran. And when we got to the corner, there was a chick that was letting, she was like 16, okay. and she was letting like three guys feel her titties. At yeah, once? Like for 10 cents or a quarter. I don't know what the deal was. Jesus. We walked up on them, like six gorillas, and we all started feeling her tit. And it was just horrible. Like everybody was grabbing her tits and shit and grabbing her ass and her tits. And I remember that I squeezed her tits, and my dick got so fucking hard. Like, I had never squeezed a woman's tits before. Yeah. And I grabbed her tits, and I walked home like 40 blocks with this little fucking heart on. <laughs> my head was on fire. <laughs> that's, that's some fucking shit. What do you think happens shit. to that? Because there's always that one girl who does that in, like, high school and middle school. What do you think that happened to that girl? I don't know. I don't know what her name is. You know, if somebody let me squeeze their tits, at least I remember their name. I don't remember what her name was. I never saw that girl again. I never heard nothing about it. It was the weirdest thing. But we were both talking about it, how we walked home. Like, wow, did you feel her tits? Like, it was fucking big for us, like, to grab her tits. Hell yeah. Felipe Sparza in the motherfucking house. What's up, fool? How big were titties, man? At that time, I don't even remember. I can't even tell you. I don't know what the girl looked like. All I know is I was 12, maybe 11, tops. Tops like uh, tits were a big deal. I That's been. what I was going through my tit fetish. Crazy. I was smelling women's mm. bras. You would smell their bras. <clears throat> like if I went to your house, I'd ask myself to go to the bathroom, and I would hope to God that your mom left one of her bras hanging. I would a mom bra? Yeah, oh fuck my yeah. God. I would yeah, sniff smell the back of it, bro. The, the back of it, like a soldier. Well, under the cups. Yeah, right. The, it gets right a little there. sweaty right there, and I didn't know what titties smell Especially. like. To this day, titties don't smell like nothing. You know, it's just baby powder. It's just whatever's in your fucking head. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. But that was it. You know, one one thing about Miami that I noticed for the first time in, in all my life that I've been going to Miami, that it's kind of an injustice if you're Spanish and you don't live in Miami because you don't get the full benefits of being Spanish. You see everything down there. 
just Cubans being Madonna is the things of the past. Different than L.A.? Because L.A. is a lot of... Yeah. No, no, no. That They have the whole... They have Venezuelans. They have all that... A lot of Colombians. A lot of Brazilians. They have this whole gap, you know. And it's like every three blocks you see this little... Uh, uh, Cafeta coffee shop or la, or la Cuba Libre coffee shop and yeah, you pull the in. The bomb. Yeah, and you get like a dollar fifty for a half a cup of coffee that you share with three people and you all get fucked up. It's just like super espresso. strong. So yeah. That's good. And everybody sits around and they talk shit and I went the first morning and got like a Cuban sandwich and a couple of croquetas and my fucking head I went to the doctor today, I gained six pounds in Miami in three days. It's fucking amazing. Like I just and I didn't eat like ice cream or flan, nothing. They got flan at the Miami Club now at the Homestead. Yeah, Field. they got delicious food, man. And both nights I had a salad with a piece of uh, dolphin. I was, was gonna mahi, say, do you mahi. try dolphin? Mahi mahi. I always ate it. I've always eaten dolphin. Wait, mahi mahi's dolphin? Yeah, it's Hawaiian. Like whatever. The oh, fuck okay. Is. Yeah, you didn't know that. I yet? saw the menu and I thought it like is actual dolphin. Home field, the yeah. dolphin fingers and all that. Yeah. The, the blue cheese dressing on the salad was fucking delicious. The tomatoes were fucking delicious. Do you understand me? I, you, you said you had some awesome Jews at the show. I had a couple of Jews at the show. I had a great black couple that came up to me. They were beautiful people. And he asked me to, where to get big geese for jiu-jitsu. And I told him Amazon.com. And, uh, <laughs> I forget the company, but they have up to AA if he's listening. They were very sweet, very nice. It was just a... Just a nice, easy fucking weekend, Felipe. I can't work hard no more. What it. club were you at? Miami Improv doesn't have a club. They use the Home Crystal Club. Palace. Okay. The, the, the whatever that is, the Crystal Casino, I guess. And then they have, and that's for big, big acts. And then they have uh, the Pool Hall. That's where they put Rob Schneider, uh, the guy from uh, Johnny, whatever. Johnny Boy, Johnny. What? He jumps off buildings, you know. Oh, Steve-O. Steve-O, Steve-O yeah. And I was there. <laughs> Johnny Boy. I, was fucking I went there with um, Rodrigo the first time. and it was Miami like, Improv. Miami Improv. And hooked up with like one Cuban guy, right? He like a big fan. He smoked us out on the on the roof, on the next door of the parking lot. And I remember we got there. And I didn't know he was Cuban. You know, I thought he was some other country, some other guy. He goes, bienvenidos a mi techo. And he took out a big ass bow. Then he gave me his card, right? And I still have the card. And that card it says... He does roofing, he does fencing, but th- the thing he wrote on the back, but what I really do is, and he wrote it like this, P-A-R-T-A-A, parte. <laughs> <laughs> parte. They love to party. He wanted a party. He went through with his old lady the first night, fall in love, then came back the last night with us and hung out with me and uh, Rodrigo. We went back two years later, he was waiting for us like a soldier. You know, what I explained to them, and I told the chick, that I told the girl, Melissa, who's very sweet, I go, this is a great club. You know, it's just a little too big. I had 325 seats. But I, go, I just want you to know something. I just want you to know that 15 years ago, the Miami Improv was one of the top 10 clubs in the country. 98, 99, that club was kicking. I was a badass fucking club. And then they started doing business dumb shit, but that was a great, solid club. Never mind that you were in fucking Miami. So, I go to Miami. I go one week with somebody. I go for two weeks. Rogan's coming with Chris McGuire, and I wait, and I MC for them. And then I go home. And they bring me back like six months later. And I get there on a Tuesday night, and there's a girl sitting there <coughs> with a guy. And we go out to the front. Everybody says hello. They come over to me. I don't know who the headliner was. I didn't headline in those days. I was always the feature act. I went outside, and they started talking to me. Okay. The next day, because those days, comedy started on Tuesday night. There was no Thursday Tuesday to Sunday? Tuesday to Sunday, Jack. Oh, my gosh. By Friday, you were fucking hitting yourself in the head (laughs) with your fucking jokes. And then, uh, because, yeah, I went there one time, and then I went again with Joy Medina and Jeff Garcia, the devil, and (laughs) couldn't figure out who was going to headline. That was a fucking crazy weekend, but... I went there, and the second night, the girl came back, and this time she came with a different guy. She said it was her brother or whatever. <laughs> then the third night, she came with a broad, a girl. Then I didn't see her again. I didn't think nothing of it, guys. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Thursday, right. Okay. Now, I don't know who the headliner was. So Tuesday, the next week, opens up. Bam, she's there. 
with a girl. We talk a little while. We get, yeah, how well, your name? Man, great. I'm just a comedy fan, and I really don't have a life at night. These are my girlfriends, and I want to show them that you're funny. Oh, that's great. So next night, I think she comes back with a guy. Then the next night, she comes back with a chubby chick, like a cute chubby chick. Oh, shit. Right? And they're talking to me, and they're talking to me, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, we start talking about blow, and one thing leads to another. And they go, come on, come with us, party in the beach. I have a condo on the beach, I got champagne, I got more blow there, if not, we'll call. And I'm like, okay. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the one girl was a fucking 12. The other girl was a chubby, cute girl. She was a six, whatever happens, happens. But when I got in that car, I'm gonna look at both these in the face. I didn't think anything about fucking them or nothing like that. It started off as a, you know what? I got nothing to do tomorrow anyway, on Thursday. What's all this, I got one show, you know? Yeah. Even if I get fucked up and hung over, I'll come back, you know, no big, you know, I got to go out of my comfort zone. So I said, fuck, let me go to the beach with them. We got downstairs, the girl had the new fucking Audi. The other girl had a Mercedes. I got in the girl, the blonde girl with the Audi. goes, come with me because she's drunk, whatever. We start driving. No, 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 in fact, we're going to go pick up more blow. I tell her I only got like 100 bucks. She's like, I don't need your money. She knows the guy. She goes over there, gets the fucking eight ball. We go back to a fucking place. We pull it. It's a, a high rise, but she had her own garage type deal. Her garage opens up, and she's got this Audi and some fucking uh, Porsche, like a, a nice Porsche, right? Yeah. And I go, why do you have these cars? What do you do? Are you a drug dealer? She goes, no, my father owns an Audi dealership or some shit. Or he imports Audis or he, some story. We go upstairs to her apartment. The apartment, guys, is banging. Big old fucking patio. She had a rack with Don Perignon in it and wine and shit. I'm watching, uh, at that time, Conan O'Brien. It was 1 in the morning or maybe 12 at night yeah. in the East Coast. And I'm sitting there fucking coked out to the gills. <laughs> and they're putting coke out. And they're like, do you mind if we switch into different clothing? And I'm not, I'm not the guys. I'm not thinking about The chubby girl said she had a boyfriend. Yeah. The thank, other girl didn't God. say nothing, so I didn't say nothing. I not just, even at all? Not even like maybe I'll get a blowjob? Nothing. Nothing. In those days, I was so coked out, even if I could have got a blowjob. My dick was fucking smaller than an inch. <laughs> I was sitting there, jawing, and all of a sudden, it's got to be yeah. four in the morning. I'm watching cable, whatever the fuck's on. They're pouring champagne. I'm drinking beers, champagne. I'm just tossing them back. I'm snorting blow. Hell and yeah. next thing you know, these girls start taking off their clothes and start swapping spit 10 feet by me. They're going at it. They're swapping spit. What are they wearing? They, they took their shirts off. All oh, right. And they, they're grabbing their tits and ba 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 it's fucking tremendous. I'm looking and making believe I'm looking at the thing. Okay. Then the one girl takes the chubby girl's panties off, and she's eating her pussy, and you can hear the... You can wow. hear this shit, and I'm sitting there doing lines of coke because they left a mountain of coke. I'm actually with a dish doing coke while they're going at it. And at this time, I don't know what to think. I'm like, I might get laid, I might not get laid, but I got to make it to the bathroom and jerk off and get my dick hard. So when I come out here, I come out with a fucking, you know, with a gun with bullets in it. I can't show Come up on, with this little up. dick in front of two chicks. And sure enough, they take their panties off. Now, the other chick, the hot blonde, has got a period. You can see a little string that she cut in half or Damn. something like that. And I'm like, oh, God. But she's, Tea bag. she's licking around it. She's licking her asshole and shit. They get up without saying nothing to me, and they go in the bedroom. I'm like, oof, I got out of that one. Now I'm starting to put bindles together. I'm starting to put coke in different bindles because I got to go. I'm taking some coke with me. Wait. Two girls are going at it, and you're just like, I got to get the coke. Because they're not even drunk. Bro, when you're a junkie, you're a junkie all the way. When Fuck. Tell, tell this fool. When you're, yeah, a, man. Jet, you're and, a jet all and the, the way. And they're playing some good ass shit, too. So now, the hot girl comes out and says, come on in here. Oh, shit. I come in here, take off your clothes. The chubby girl wants to fuck you. Oh, shit. Right? And they start fucking jerking me off and the whole thing and nothing. Nothing. My dick will not get hard. It is Motherfucker set me down. The chubby girl sucked it. The blonde girl sucked it. It's. And I'm sorry this is going this way tonight, but it's a <laughs> Monday night, bitches. And I wasn't even going to talk about this. I, I was just remembered talking to Felipe because I know Felipe has been to Miami. He knows they're crazy. So now I go back in the living room, and they're laying around drinking champagne. They got a huge dildo. Like a two-way dildo, so one gets on it, and the other one, they ah. both fuck the dildo. Damn. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, this is crazy, right? So they're tired. The sun's coming out. I'm still doing blow. There's still more blow left. The chubby girl tries to sleep in the living room, and the blonde goes into the bedroom. 
Something happens. The chubby girl leaves, and the blonde girl comes out and gets me and says, come on, put a condom on. And this time I get a heart on. So now I'm, I'm fucking around with the blonde girl. The chubby girl forgot her shoe or a fucking sandwich or whatever the fuck she forgot. <laughs> and she sees me fucking the blonde, and she goes off on me. And Damn. the girlfriend at like 8 in the morning, fuck you both. You both had this plan. That's why you drove without me. You never wanted to fuck me. You tricked me. You wanted And I'm like, look at this shit. I don't care who I'd fuck. Both of you are cute in my fucking world, you know. So I hook up with this girl this Thursday night. Then she comes to the improv Friday and picks me up. She comes Saturday, Sunday, every night. I go back to that condo, and we do blow, and we mess around, and we talk about life. And she tells me she used to date David Lee Roth and blah, 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 blah. And at the end of that Sunday, she takes me out to dinner after the, the improv and goes, listen, after tonight, lose my number. I'm getting married in two weeks. What? She goes, what? just lose my number. I'm marrying some weather guy or something. Lose my number. It was great while it lasted. I really dig you. Good luck in your career. That's it. I walked out of there. I never thought about that broad again. Never called. Never did nothing. Nothing ever came of it. When Twitter got big, she never hit me up. When Facebook got big, she never hit me up. Friday night, I walk off stage, guys. Second show. And I'm walking towards the green room. And some lady goes to turn around and she grabs my arm and she goes, how are you? And she gives me a hug. And I'm like, good, good. And a hug, well, well, the guy next to her puts it, he goes, that was great. And the other guy, that was great. And she goes, yes. She goes, I met Joey about 15 years ago. We were friends at the improv. I would go to the improv and we'd have drinks together. And she looked at me and she winked at me with one fucking eye. Like a soldier. And she didn't look like her at all. No, she looked like it didn't look like that girl at all. She looked what happened? She got, now. got older. Yeah, she, she was a mom, a mom now. Her hair was different. She didn't have glasses. That's what's uh That's It was fucked crazy. Up. It was fucking crazy. Did any part of you think like you're going to have to tell her, like, listen, I have No, I, I walked into, I go, oh, great to see you. And I walked into the green room. And then I sat in there for a little while. And I processed the whole thing. Yeah. And I said, okay. And I went back out there and she was gone. Just like that. That's crazy. That is the craziest fucking thing that happened this weekend. There you have it, Felipe. That's crazy, man. Me, I was at the Ice House. That's right, you were at the Ice House. I was at the Ice House this week and it was fun. We added, a, we added an extra show on Saturday at 6 p.m. So we did a 6 p.m. A clean one? 18 No, no, no. It was sold out. So we added an extra Look third at show. Felipe. Six Shit. shows, man. Six or five? Six. Look at Felipe. So it was sold three, out. You did Thursday night too? Yeah. Oh, shit. Look at Felipe taking him deep into the fucking murky waters of the underworld and shit. But on the Thursday show, man, like I remember um, when I was at Wild Coyotes, you know, I was always wanting to do any show that pays 50, or 50 bucks or more, I'm there. You know, and you always see it hit me up. You know, it's, it's, a show, <clears throat> it's a show over here in Hollywood, you know, in Burbank. Burbank Hills, Hollywood Hills. It'll pay like 75 bucks, but it's at 2.30 in the, in the morning. morning. So I said, all right, so fuck it. It was Steven Fly, Rodrigo Torres, Chepo, Juan Garcia, myself. Where? We drove to that gig. This weekend? <clears throat> no, it was, this was like many years ago. It okay. was like in 2000. Oh, I remember that gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2006. 2 in the morning. Yeah, did you like go? Like a black club. No, it was, no, not that one. That was a, that the, was a different one that in was Hollywood. A, that was a good luck club. Okay, that was That's, that was one in the middle one. of the night. Right, right, That right. one, I went to another one, and it's like, bro, when I get there, this is like an undercover cop. Checking your make sure you have no guns, and you go inside here, man. And they're partying, bro. I mean, they got arcades in At there at 2 30 in the morning, yes, bro. They had an arcade there outside, they had a bathroom stall. You know, normally, up, up when you party at a, at a house, people pee outside. This guy installed bathroom stalls, so when you you could just pee on the side of the wall, like a, you flush it. So, wow. this party, this, and then the inside of the house was set up to look like 5 p.m. every day. <laughs> he had nice lights. Well, anyway, I partied at this guy's house after the the show. I didn't leave his house till till noon the next day. I just stood there with him, you know, and he was talking to me, old Spanish guy, and um, I forgot about him, you know, because I don't want to go back over there because I don't want to party. I felt like Pinocchio. You remember Pinocchio go to that party and then everybody's growing, fucking, um, turning into donkeys. So I never thought about this guy. He, I saw him at the show at the end of the show. He saw me, and he opened up his jacket, and he had a little vial that's nasal spray. This week? Yeah. It has nasal spray in it. It's like a nasal spray jar. But cocaine. But it has cocaine, yes. Cocaine and that. water. 
He goes, hey, you remember me? And I said, oh, wow, it's you, bro. I've been talking about you forever. And I told everybody, this is the guy, this is the guy. This guy had photos, bro, of me pretending to be a bartender all fucked up in his house. Fuck it. <laughs> no spraying water? Is that like... A- it needs to spray coke. Fuck. It's already mixed with the water. What the fuck? They probably... I don't, I don't know how they do it. I've had people had that before. It was like a like um, that nasal spray was for your nose, but it had like half all Coke and some water in it. Fuck. I only get one of those a month, like one every three months, a good one. Like somebody from the past will hook you up on Facebook, and you're like, this is fucking tremendous, you know? And then you call them, and then you're like, this was a fucking mistake. Sometimes you call them back, and they're not. They're crazy now. They tell you about Martians or something. Yeah. I called a buddy of mine. It's crazy was, when I, I talk called, about that shit. I called a buddy of mine that I ran with every night for 10 years. About <laughs> three years ago, he was living in Long Beach, dog. I had to hang up the fucking phone, like, make believe. Like, we got no reception here. Because it was fucking craziness about Martians, and they invaded Long Beach dressed as Russians and shit. Martians dressed as Russians. That's what he was telling me. And he goes, a lot of people don't know, but I see it. Coco, I went to school for this. And I'm like, where'd you go to school? And he's telling me how he went to Jersey City State for his bachelor's and some other For alien for, hunting? For something. And he goes, and, uh, it was just crazy. So sometimes you got to watch. But it's great when you go, like that girl, I, I didn't think nothing. I didn't, when I closed the door to the green room was when I realized who she was. And I was like, oh my God, that was a long fucking time ago. That was a long time ago. That's You've been doing comedy a long time. A long time. <clears throat> you know, it'd be nice just to write a story about comedy, a book about comedy stories. Just in the beginning, like, I still remember it was a Wednesday night at 11 when I got the page from David Tribble. Like, I was sitting at the Wolf's house. I was at Mike Kessler's house. The Wolf. House. We were f- coming down off a blow attack. It was like 11.30, and I got a call from David Tribble. Like January, like f- February of '95, saying, "Joey, I got six books." David Tribble, I've got six weeks of work for you if you have it right now. Open your book, and me going, "Oh my God, this is real!" Like this is real. Pocatello, I, the tour started in <laughs> the tour started in a base, an army base, or some service base China in Utah, Lake? in Utah. Utah. That's where the first night was, Utah. I'm like, I thought they were just Mormons. No, this is an army base. I remember I died a slow death. It was like that bar that they used in Carlito's way. Yeah. It looked just like that. Was that the one where the sergeant's wife gave you a blowjob on no, stage? No, that's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, Nation's Home. That's Mountain Home. That's Mountain Home. I don't know if it's in Mount, no, Idaho. Mountain Idaho. Home, Idaho. It's a, a t- type of service base. But that was on that run. Like That was six weeks. That was the beginning of my comedy career. Six weeks in a fucking car that the axle was broken half and you couldn't hit a pothole or you were doomed, you know, with fucking just everything that your life needed in this car. I had everything in that car. Band-Aids, a football, basketball, swimming fins, because you never know what you needed on the road. And everything was placed perfectly. Blankets, sleeping bags, you know, waterproof shit, socks, clothing, extra food in the back. When did you ever have to break out the swimming fins? I just, I had them from, uh, somebody gave them to me when I was married. So I took them with me. They were fucking like $2,000 fins. They were beautiful. <laughs> so I took them with me, and I, God knows who had, what happened to those things. They got towed. But I was thinking about what I had back there. I had a great basketball. I had maps. I had books, flashlights, every tool imaginable to fix a car. And I had it p- placed impeccably. Because if I used to get stuck on the road or I didn't want to, I didn't have money for a hotel. Who had no. money for a hotel, bro? You pulled over at a rest area, locked your doors, left your sunroof a little open, and took your chances. You slept like every 15, you know, like 20 minutes shot, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, until you heard birds and trucks pulling up next to you. It's a fucking horrible way to live. Holy right? fuck. Yeah, that's, and I did that. I used to have to go from Denver to Baltimore. That was my f- first real gig. And along the way, I didn't have money for a hotel. Hotel. Remember Lake Havasu? Lake Havasu. Damn, man. For what? We used to go to Lake Havasu, bro. A lot. 150. So for a hundred and fifty dollars in a room. Paula asked me today uh, over the weekend randomly. 
how how long did it take for a comedian to be like headlining? And I told her like around ten years is what I've heard to like start. And she said like how do how do they do it for that long for no money? Like when you're sleeping on the side of the on the side of the highway in a car, why aren't you just like let me go sell drugs again? Let me friggin' roof again? It was hard, man. That's that's crazy. And I had to do. I remember pulling over because there was no rest area, and leaving the car on and sleeping and waking up and th- thinking that you fell asleep driving. You don't know what that feeling's like. That's why I never slept on the road again. Because you have to keep the heat on uh, with the fine. gas running. Yeah. So you'd wake up and all of a sudden you'd pop up <gasps> and you'd grab the steering wheel. And that was the <laughs> scariest feeling I ever had in my fucking life. I remember um, I used to get so happy because this, this guy started a, a, a show on Friday nights, Latino night. I forgot his name. He was crazy. But man, it was, it was crazy like... That was the only time I, I I ate pasta with shrimp. Remember, we were show up at the improv and they had to they had to have warm bread, and then we were eating of one of two plate. Me, you, and then Gavin. Then you go you talk Gavin. And man, come on, man. But we were gonna pass by right now. You think I'm sharing? You think I'm sharing plates? Getting get pissed off. That was yeah yeah. Because yeah. if you did a spot at the improv, they you give got you a dinner, big, a big dinner, dude. A big dinner they don't have the sh- soup. big shrimps though. You look down on your plate and some comedians already snatched one of your shrimps. You know, they used to tell you, listen, this gig only pays 50 bucks, but it's all you could eat and all you could drink. And you're like, fuck it, I'm getting mine, you know? <laughs> and they'll give you a hotel room. You went, you brought a gram of coke because <laughs> you knew you could fuel that with alcohol. They didn't give a fuck. Let's say you got paid 100 bucks, you gave the bartender 10 bucks. You drank all fucking night on that 10 bucks. Fuck. It's fucking hard. I love when people, I like, whenever I get to go with you somewhere or just go to the green room they always think it's still like that and it's like it's it couldn't be more opposite of that now it's just crazy to hear those stories because i've never once seen you go anywhere but the hotel after a show yeah but i've never I, even when in those days i never partied in the green room well i'm not saying you partied in the there green was room but no it's, snor- there was i didn't do a line till after i got off that second fucking show okay when i got off that second show as soon as i got off stage there was no talking to people there was no pictures. There was no goodbye. There was no nothing. I went straight to the condo, and I had my plan already laid out. I already had the coke laid out, the, the alcohol. I was a professional. I did all that shit in the afternoon. All wow. that shit was in my whatever, my hotel room in the afternoon. You have it all set up for you? The one I drove crazy was Joe Rogan because I disappeared. He knew. Yeah. For years, when Joe Rogan got off the stage, the first thing he said to was, where's Joe Diaz? He left. Fuck. That motherfucker left, you know. It's I, I didn't think of anything else. There was a time period where I didn't think of nothing but party. I remember one on the road with that girl Jody Furtick for six weeks, but we did three weeks of triple runs. We fucking drank hard, fuck every night. You drink hard with Jody. I'm talking about a bottle of Tawaka and a case of beer. That's hard with a couple bumps, a joint or two. Four or five packs of cigarettes. Oh, yeah. That's every night? Every night every we're night. on the road. Gosh. We'd sleep Saturday night. We would party. <clears throat> and we may take the first night off of, like, Tuesday night, the first night of the triple run. We're in El Paso. In El Paso, you went to El Paso to do one thing. When you went to El Paso, Texas, in those days, it was to do one thing. What's that? Snort blow and get your butt pole smoked. And eat Arby's and eat the... That, and that, that, was, two, that was a like Tuesday through Tuesday Sunday gig. Tuesday through Sunday gig, bro. <sighs> You left Monday morning. No, there were some rough gigs. Miami, there were some towns that you went to and you knew you were going to party fucking hard. You know, you used to have a good club. They're still there, but they're very clean now, Myrtle Beach. When I went to Myrtle Beach, it was fucking on. It was six days of fucking constant drinking. The, the, the club didn't pay you a lot of money, but they had all these deals in Myrtle Beach that if you sat down for two hours and got an ear beaten, they'd give you $300. Oh, uh, one of those things. One of those yeah. things. So we do two of those. Fuck, I'll take it for, for 300 I'll let you fucking give me an ear beating about whatever fuck you want. Do a credit app on me. You ain't getting nowhere. So, but I'll still a Vista. I thought about doing that for those $99 flights to Hawaii. What have do you have seen? to do? It's like a it's like a timeshare thing, and apparently they get really mean. Like if you start saying no, they'll go to your wife and be like, "How are you with this loser of a guy?" But apparently at the end of it, it's like $99 flights to Hawaii. So that'd be amazing. So you have to take an ear beating for how long? I don't know how long it is. Probably around the same thing. And it's timeshare in Hawaii? Yeah, that's what I heard. Whoa. 
That's what it is. You think I ever get in a timeshare, Felipe? Oh, hell no. Fuck that shit, sharing your fucking place with some filthy fucking animals. They got lice and shit up their ass. <laughs> What's up, dog? What's up, food? Just chilling right good. here, You're man. You're doing commercials and shit. You're I'm in two shit. commercials, man. Un buen fit. Un buen fit para ti. I also did a Target commercial. Oh, cool. I did a Target commercial with Laura Lapkis. Yeah, open from your Uncle Joey with you. I mean, that, when you're talking about that chubby girl and that um, hot chick, is that how you came up with a joke? Um, yeah. Sometimes you got you to gotta, you gotta go to heaven. You got to go to hell before you go to heaven. I'm over here fucking the hot one, and I'm looking at the side of her, Van Gogh. Something. I remember. Something I, I like wrote that. a bit about it. I wrote yeah, because the, the other one looked like, he's, the other one like Van Gogh with a bad nose. Something. They were doing coke something. like that. Cause yeah, it was fucking horrible. It was a hard. I couldn't. I couldn't get a hard dick. It doesn't sound horrible. Oh yeah, I guess that's horrible. Houston, no. man, is a, a place to party too. Houston, man. Austin. I used to get fucked up in Austin. Yeah, but I used to get some good coke in, in Houston. By the time I got to the hotel, the phone would ring at the hotel because the manager of the club sold it. Really? So he called me and go, "It's ready for you when you get to the club." You had a relief. You had a set, and that's tremendous when a manager sold it to you because you don't have to search. You had no, and you had till Saturday to pay him off. <laughs> so you kept cash all week. He, he knew where your check was coming from. So as soon as you got your check, you said to it, you tell the owner give me cash, and you pay him on the way out of town. Jesus, tremendous. But I used to get fucked up in Houston. Oh my God, Houston. I used to call the guy at four, and I'd stand outside in the street, and he'd bring it to me. Fucking tremendous. Oh, that's right. You went crazy in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? You went crazy. I went crazy in Houston, man. Like, I was already crazy. like a party animal in like 2004, 2005. I fell off the wagon. And then um, I, I ran out of stuff. So I called up Joe Diaz and I hooked up with some little ass Mexican fool, man, in a hotel room. And then after that, me and I'm some cowboy comedian with bad feet. <laughs> Jenkins, I don't know his name. Um, He's the, still no, out No, the there. one that got married to the girl from the last Rachel. Time. Yeah, with that dude. I forgot his name. Him and I, man. Billy I, Wayne. Billy, Billy Wayne. Billy yeah. Wayne. I kidnapped that fool for like a, a eight you, hours. You didn't have to kidnap him. That motherfucker was down, dog. Yeah, he was. He the one that took me to the hotel. We were when partying, he, bro. When he started snorting dogs, you got <laughs> down. He, I remember we did a 10-hour drive to Midland, <laughs> Texas. Yeah, we man. We snorted the whole way listening to Tupac. We don't care about He's a country dude. We yeah. were snorting to Midland listening to Tupac. He picked me up. That's a 10-hour drive from Houston, Texas to Midland. He picked me up in the middle of the night, like 11 o'clock. And I'm like, what are we doing? You want me to drive? He's like, fuck, no, I got everything ready, man. His <laughs> eyeballs were fucking gigantic. And he's like, man, I got like an eight ball and a couple grams spare. Let's just do it. We snorted the whole fucking way to Midland. Because we got there to do radio, so we had the whole day to sleep. So okay. we fucking drove 10 hours straight. We stopped twice to fill up the tank. We were gigged up to the gaggles. So you went from hey, driving 10 hours to do that gig in Midland to hook up with more shit with Jenkins? Was it the Jenkins gig? Or the, yes. Yes. That, pl that was the place where the DEA would raid the place while you were on stage. It was fucking... Listen, that Jenkins guy got arrested for... When you get married to two people at the same time, polygamy. 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 So he had a wife in he had a wife in San Antonio, Fuck. and he had a, a wife in Midland, Texas. That's that's always crazy when people do that. This guy was crazy. He said he was a magician. He was fucking horrendous. <laughs> right? He was horrendous at every level. He was a nice guy, but as soon as you got there, I had never seen this. This is the first time this ever happened to me, ladies and gentlemen. Midland, Texas. You get there, you check in, he calls you. It's going to be a great room. You're going to love it. You get there, and when you get to the green room, he would come up to you and put an eight ball right in your hand. And he would have one, you would have one, and the feature would have one. So do you know that the first night he did his eight ball before the show ended? Damn. Two shows ended. That's On fast. stage. Who? Blasting. Blasting in the green room. He did it. He came back to me. He's like, I The guy you drove with? No, Jenkins. Oh, Jenkins. He came back to the green room and said, can I get half of what I gave you? Even, Damn. Even I didn't do that much. He was on stage doing everybody's material. And his <laughs> jaw was fucking going. His jaw was going. And the bar was owned by a like, Mexican dude with big hats and, and cowboy boots and Pointy shields. Tails. Pointy Oh, my God. It was fucking on. 
It was on. And I, they paid me, I think it was 800 to headline. And what's his name? Got four, the feature. But they, every night you got there, and that was the deal. You got an eight ball every fucking night. So Friday and Saturday they gave you a fucking eight ball. And it wasn't really that good. But nobody really gives you an eight ball anymore. So at least he took care of you. You know what I'm saying? Me too. Like when I went to do the show there in Odessa, that's like the next door oh, to Medley. Oh, sure, yeah. I kid you not. Like it paid like, I don't know what it, I forgot like it paid like wrong maybe. He, he paid for your flight. So he gave you at the end of the week 1500 or 1200 Man, I kid you. Every night there was like 12 people there, nine people. Friday night big show, 12 people. And then the owners in the back just laughing, enjoying the show. You know, some places, you know, people are scared because it's empty. You know, the place is empty. I'm losing money. The owner's having a good time. At the end of the week, he just pays me in 20, all 20s. And then later on, everybody, I found out a year later that everybody that was involved in that club went to prison. Yeah. Including, um, including what's his name? Tom Federal. Oh, that, 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 that was the owner who invited me, who, who called me at my hotel room. And invited me to a dog fight. He uh, goes, where, "Where's Selena from?" Selena from Corpus Christi. That was I dope. party there too hardcore, that man. Was a room that was run by the cartel. The but Mexican where, cartel. Where Jerry Roach is from? That's where they are. Where's Jerry Roach from? I don't know. I think I think Corpus Christi. No, he's from the town down. He's from McAllen. No border. Yes, around borders. Where they shoot people, people go disappearing and shit. Holly McAllen, Texas. But Corpus Christi, Marilyn and I, Marilyn Martinez, God bless her soul, and I did a, a gig that was beautiful. It was a Joy Medina friend gig. And it was two floors, and people sat on top. It was like an old, where people go to get ice cream, and they sit in chairs. What do you call those places in the 50s? Ice cream a soda parlor? pop, like an yeah. ice cream pop. Oh, so, uh, so does it. And whatever. the guys built a second floor to it, so it was like a stage. It was fucking beautiful. But that place was, the, the owners were jazzed up. But that, that Saturday, I think it was Thursday through Saturday, that Saturday the owners gave me and Marilyn some of the best cocaine I ever did in my life. It was a yellow, yellow chunk sour. This had to be 98, 99, maybe 2000 when I first started dating Terry. But the craziest gig of them all, the last 10 years, was the one in Iowa. Oh, that's Whitey's Bar and Grill? What's the name of the kid with the, the, the fucking crazy place in Iowa? Duquesne, Iowa, something. You know, the Mexican kid that picks you up is finally owns the only Mexican restaurant in that neighborhood. I don't know. It's two planes. You have to fly into Chicago, then take a small plane to the outskirts of Illinois, and he picks you up and drives you across the border to Indiana. Now, where he's well, from. That, that's a Mikey O. Mike Yo? No, 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 no. That's not a Mike Yo. Alex okay. Ortiz? It's an... Yes, it's one of his buddies. So the guy... Joy Via Gomez? No, the guy used to do comedy once was... What, name to the fucking town. You, you're like <laughs> Sammy the Bull Gavano, while dropping all these names. Fucking... Uh, they fly you in, and right at the airport, the guy pays you. That's the dude you said that wanted to bring me over, and they pay you in cash, in Felipe. Cash. And they, you, you call me up in the middle of the night, bro. You go, Felipe, got the guy right here. They fucking pay you in Vegas. cash, bro. He showed up in they Vegas. They love you, but they got Mexicans over here. He oh, my God. It's a taco place in a white neighborhood, and they've been there for 2,000 years. Like, it's like third generation Mexican or some shit. And they have two places, but they do comedy in one place. Con it's, it's not Council Bluff, Iowa. No, no, it's him and his brother. And they had a bar. You land in Chicago, then they you take another flight to the outskirts of Illinois, and they bring you across the border. But when he was pumping gas, he goes, you know what we're known for? This is the meth capital. Oh, fuck. Okay, so we start talking, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, listen, I'll have an envelope for you later. He gives me cash. He gives me weed. And he goes, when you get to the thing, there'll be the, the blow for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I don't do it no more. He goes, oh, no, no, I heard that. I go, yeah, yeah, I did, but no, I stopped about a year ago. I just stopped or something. Now, there's only two flights out of there on a Sunday, and I had, like, a huge audition Monday. There's two flights out of there Sunday, so I'm sweating this already. This flight's at 5.58 in the morning. It's one of those little fucking jets. Yeah. Two and propellers. It, two propellers, and if not, you got to wait till like, fucking 10 o'clock that, that, that night. Yes. So I tell him this. I go, listen, bro, you know that. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, we get to the fucking bar. And the first show was cool. It was a regular show. But after the parents leave, they were, it was a line to go to the bathroom to do blow. 
I hadn't seen something like that since I was a kid, since I was like 82 when cocaine was very prevalent. It was out there, and, and you go to bars, and it's, it's like you stepped into a fucking twilight zone. Everybody's jaw was going. Everybody's fucking was drooling, smoking cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Their noses were leaking. Everybody's going in and out of the fucking bathroom. The Last Pe- night, oh, <clears throat> yeah. People are hugging. It's just too, too fucking surreal. Hell yeah. This place turned into that for the second show. Lee, in such a way that I was on stage and I could see people's jaws going. I could see drinks that were half full. Jeff Dunham when, with when no puppets. When you see people <laughs> that are, with drinks that are half full, that's how you know there's blow and shit around. And you were just to look at your end of sobriety? Yeah, and I'm looking. I'm not calling it sobriety. I'm calling it not doing blow. I'm still okay. smoking weed with eight hands. That's true. And I'm looking around. I'm not being hypocritical. But I hadn't seen that in such a long time. Yeah. And when I got off stage, they're like, hey, man, let's play. And there were people were grabbing me and giving me ferocious ear beatings. <laughs> and finally, uh-huh. I told the owner, I go, hey, man, because he started partying. I go, dog, make sure you're there in the morning. Yeah, 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 I'll be there. That motherfucker showed up late. He did 100 all the way to the fucking airport and got me there. They barely let me onto the plane. I tormented that guy. He kept calling me for like two years. I want you to come back. Fuck you. <laughs> that was the land of the fucking surreal, my friend. That was heavy duty, man. I, I couldn't handle that shit ever again like that. That was too real. Too fucking real. Felipe, drop it on me, cocksucker. You're a death mute. Did she but you hit you already? Kind of a little bit, man. So what, what, was, what were you on before that? What were you smoking before that? Nothing. What is that? Some, um, What's the lighter? What's in the green thing with the lighter? Oh, it's, a, it's an empty lighter. It needs to refill one of those little cartridges. Okay, well. Okay, and what's the lighter? What's the green thing on the lighter for? The lighter is for uh, when you pack the bowl, you just stack it like this with this. Or two Very nice. Ones. Somebody nice. gave it to me. Oh, very nice. Okay. How you feeling, fucko? I'm really fucked up. You really? Okay. No, you're yeah. not fucked up. You yes, had 10 milligrams. No, I still. didn't. I had like 30 milligrams. No. That was nothing. You look a Chinese guy now with a little hat. Oh, God, He's yeah. a little fucking hat. <laughs> He's a fucking tail with stars on it. <laughs> he could whip you with it and shit like that. What else been going on? What are you hearing? I'm what getting married on December 13th. You don't, You know what? I think I may be available. Where's the wedding at? And Eagle Rock. And where's the reception? Eagle Rock, same spot. As soon as we get married, you're gonna open up, open up the chairs. The same spot turns into the reception hall. Is it vegan? Vegan and non-vegan. What's what's the non-vegan menu? <laughs> um, pasta with sausages and uh, meatballs, garlic bread, salad. Now don't get me wrong. And um, <laughs> the, the wedding Mexican? cake's Where's gonna the be Mexican the wedding cake's gonna be vegan. Jesus and um, <laughs> he's not going now. He's like, where's, <laughs> the, where's the Mexican food? Though? Oh, we well, well, eat Mexican food every day. Nah, your mom ain't making something special. No, she ain't making nothing. You're not gonna get something catered for the fucking non spaghetti eating motherfuckers. Maybe I want to. I'm going to a Mexican wedding, dog. It overpowers the white side. You gotta have something for the fucking Spaniards, dog. <laughs> you can't do this to me, son. I don't want to eat spaghetti. We'll meatball. park a taco truck right outside. No, no taco <clears throat> truck. Make, somebody make some sauce, some red sauce with some beef and some Mexican rice. And some I, I want to brought you today a vegan carnitas today. Lisa made um, <laughs> she made dude, like, a, a big batch of um, jackfruit tacos. Oh, you're hurting, it, you're it, hurting it took his her, It took her three hours to do, man, and it spiced it up. It, t- it, fucking snack. it tastes like um, <laughs> al pastor. It's pretty good. Oh, gee. And what is it made of? Tofu? No, no jackfruit. Jackfruit? Yeah. What's jackfruit? Jackfruit is, this, is this, um, this fruit that only grows in China. It comes in a can. It costs $3. And you, <laughs> it, it looks like an artichoke. And you got to break it up like weed and mash that motherfucker up and take all the water out and then add spices. And it starts looking like pork. It's the same texture as pork. You know the way pork tastes like without no flavor, without just salty. So you add flavors to it and you marinate it. You soak the water out again. It's a long process. And then you refry it again and you deep fry it. And man, it tastes very good. It tastes like carnitas. If you forgot what carnitas taste like, it tastes good. I'm going to bring you when one, you, man. When are you going <laughs> to snap out of this fucking shit? I love you like a brother. When are you going to snap out of this? I, I like my shit to come up smooth, bro. Like what dairy. smooth? What fucking smooth? You what know. So you gotta have a little red sauce and some rice. We do some have bread. rice sauce. We do and have some rice. Some and some tomatoes. Tom- well, not tamales, but tortillas. And a little salsa, maybe some spicy. I'm not asking you to spend ten G's. I'm asking you to go to, to the, what's that place they sell the margaritas at on on Western? 
Um, El Cholo. El Cholo. Oh, no, El Cholo. They cater all the time. Tell me you want a little sauce, a little rice, a little beef dish. It's all right. Some people don't want to eat spaghetti. Some I think we are going to have um. You might we we are going to have empanadas for desserts, not for hors d'oeuvres, empanadas. <laughs> if you guys only listen to the show, I need you to go to YouTube and watch this show right now. Because your face looks like he kicked all of your cats in the face. I got stepped on them. They're going to have them. Just, um, just go. We're going to have a, we're going to have a section. <laughs> with, 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 shoot themselves. With, lem- <laughs> <laughs> with lemonade and um, punch, coffee, and a bunch of cookies. You know, a bunch of cookies. Listen, um, black and white cookies. You know, if you're from New York. Listen, just to and, um, family, please. Biscotti. Please have some green chili enchiladas for some people. Just get one tray. Please. I eat that shit all the time. It's man. not what you're gonna eat. It's not what you're gonna <laughs> eat. It's not about you. You're inviting your friends into your life and your culture. What the fuck? You're not gonna have no mariachis either. They won't go. There's no fucking vegans. They're <laughs> vegans. You gotta have a little green chili burritos with some carne. Nothing expensive. I'm not talking about fucking. Uh, uh, shrimp cocktails a la fucking, you know, with the fucking sauce. You don't eat that either no more? What? A nice shrimp cocktail from El... No, shrimp is meat. It's, it's, it's um, a fish. I don't, eat, I don't eat animals. How do you give up all that great Mexican food? Like, all the stuff Paul's mom has made? She made me tacos dorado, like, a few weeks ago. I mean, I still eat that, you know? Like, I eat tacos dorado, but they're made out of potato. Oh, okay, you know, so I've had that when I was a kid anyways. And um, I don't eat... um As far as ceviche, you know, that stuff... We, I still eat ceviche, but it's made out of out of um, coconut. <laughs> I mean, it's not um, it's not a coconut like from a What's coconut that? you buy. It's a young coconut. It's like fresh. It's smooth. It feels like, and then yeah. you break it up. Listen, nothing replaces shrimp on a ceviche. Okay? <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. Maybe it's lobster it's... from fucking the northeast or something. Vegan ceviche is pretty good. Oh though. God, Almighty oh Felipe, it yeah, tastes, it's, listen, it's listen. good. Just do me a favor, please. Don't insult me. <laughs> I'm going to go to this wedding. But you, can't <laughs> you can't have spaghetti and meatballs, though. Listen. I don't know what it is. It's, I know there's sausages no, somewhere. No, no, listen. Forget all that shit. Michael Corleone hasn't gotten married in 30 years. All right? Even I did the rent. I did a low-rent wedding. I had carnitas. I had carnitas from uh, the Cuban place. I had pastrami from Langas. I had something for everybody. I had something else. We ordered something else. You gotta have something for everybody, but you got vegan that doesn't fly at a wedding. Unless oh, it's gonna be food. buffet too. So oh well, whoop the fucking do spaghetti to like. I just <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be like shakies. All you can eat buffet. Shit, I'm about to throw some fucking mojos, Listen, bro. Please, please, just go. <laughs> Tell Lisa you just added, you just added El Cholo to your fucking uh, wedding list. Okay, El I'll, I'll tell that. I'll see what we can do. Green cheese enchiladas with some white rice with some Mexican rice. And some toma- and some uh, tortillas. That's it. I don't want you to go overboard. I'm not asking you for some shrimp. Cocktail. Some tamales, maybe? Not even. That's how light I am, because those things are expensive, but not a bad idea, because you can <laughs> vegan them up, and you can put pineapple in them and yeah. fruit. But you can also have red ones and green ones. Not a bad idea. Forget the enchiladas. Hit a couple tamales, two dozen a piece. What do they cost you? 50 cents a piece, Felipe? Jesus Christ. And some Spanish rice. I'd be so fucking happy. I feel like I went to a cultural thing. I don't want to go to a Mexican wedding and eat fucking spaghetti, dog. It insults my fucking inner being. I have to scratch up peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, bro. I'll do one of those, too. <laughs> Here you go. A little something to break up. I, I really have, a, like, a hole in my fucking heart right now from this conversation. I want to be around to pick up the pieces. To roll the number. When... Somebody breaks your heart. That's it. Keep playing it, okay. you fuck. Some I'm gonna get the full patois in it. It's kind of, I gotta get filled up again. Oh my god. How do people do this to me? I don't ask for much. <laughs> Every time Felipe comes, it's like it's something amazing happens. The black lady knocking on the door. No, <laughs> it's oh, vegan. I can't sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna take three sleeping pills. <laughs> 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 Oh my God! Well, we'll leave you I gotta become a wedding planner. People are missing the fucking boat. That oh man, they they're expensive, man. I won't even want to be expensive. That's just a TV people, show right there. I just Look. rather not have people embarrass themselves. <laughs> if I go to your wedding and there's not a stitch of Mexican food, 
I would be so fucking upset. I would be so upset, like my heart would ache. I would sit there and I would look at, and Terry would be embarrassed. Like she'd say, what are you, because my wife don't understand it either. She'd look at me and say, what are you talking about, Felipe's your friend? I'm, he has no Mexican food here. You don't understand what that means to me. I need something, a little piece of something to represent. I need somebody to shoot a gun. You know, I need, <laughs> we'll have a, a bottle of tapatio, bro, you can put it in a pasta. No, I don't want no fucking tapatillas, dog. God damn it. <laughs> Why are you doing me like this? I thought you were going to leave that vegan shit alone on the day of your wedding. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> People still don't believe me, man. I tell them I'm vegan. They tell me, what, what, you're vegan, bro? You're fucking fat. What do you eat, crops? Oreos, man, they're not vegan. They're vegan, so you know, Oreos. What kind of oils? Oreos. 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 Oreo cookies. Those are the best. Well, put those at the wedding, too. Throw in all of those. They'll be at the cookie <laughs> section right next to the black and whites. Christ, Felipe, you can't do this to me. No, no pan dulce, nothing, bro. No, you got to have all that something. Your, fa your family's going? Yeah. And my you mom's going. And you're going to feed them fucking spaghetti? Are you fucking serious? You, you when does this shit end? Give them trace leches cake. That's yeah. great. That would be good for all the non-vegan people. Come on, Felipe. You got a month to change this, man. The please. wedding cake going to be bomb, man. You'll like it. Uh, listen. <laughs> I'm on a diet that week. I just want to eat Mexican so, food. The, the top layer of the cake, zucchini cake. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Tomato spice cake. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so All the cookies are vegan. Oh, so how am I going to eat Oreos? Huh? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. My face turning red. I can't take it no more. He's killing me with this fucking wedding menu, Felipe. Come on. We're going to have a Justin Rivera doing magic, walking no, around. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I, I, I called up somebody to get a magician to walk around doing hand listen, magic, and then listen. Justin Rivera said, why don't I do it? Listen. So he's been bugging me I and Patrick you. DeGear for about a week. Where is Patrick DeGear? I don't know, man. You know, I, I hosted the. I also I hosted the Laughlin Comedy Festival. Did I tell you that? Yeah, you told me tremendous. It was crazy, bro. Some lot of comics I never heard of were hilarious. <laughs> 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 the winner was a guy named Dale Jones, bro. He was a cross between Jeremy Hotz and um, and Greg Hahn. Hmm. Put them together, Dale Jones. I know a Dale up. Jones in Boulder, Colorado. He you from know him? Hamburger Hill. Now he's about fifty now. He went to Vietnam. He ain't no oh. comedian. He was fucking going crazy in the movie. That ain't the way was, it is. This guy was going crazy on stage. Dog, I took him to see Hamburger Hill. <laughs> he kept bothering me for weeks. When Hamburger Hill comes out, this guy brought his medals in. He brought his fucking pictures in, him and the Marines, at the top of Hamburger Hill, and they made a movie that didn't include him. Oh. Dog, he went to the movies with me, and three, ten minutes into the movie, this motherfucker went off at the movie theater. Fuck you. They had to call the cops. The cops asked me if I knew him. I don't know nobody. You understand? They fucking arrest him. So I, saw him I saw him two days later at the work at the Dodge store. That was one of the craziest jobs I had. I used to work at Hollister Chrysler Plymouth. But they also owned the Dodge store. Colorado? Colorado and Boulder. That was one of my second car salesman job. I snorted so much coke there. There was a guy who wouldn't take his coke home. He would hide it in the ceiling. And I would go early and go in the ceiling, take it out, take the coke out and put aspirin in it and put it back in the ceiling. Oh, my God. I used to torment. And then they had the keys to the soda machine. So the fucking soda man wouldn't take, he would take the change but leave dollars. And I would steal the dollars and go eat breakfast with Georgie. <laughs> fucking unbelievable. I ran that place amok. You had adventures everywhere you went. Like, no one has adventures like this. Georgie had, Georgie had two of the cars. Georgie was the lock guy. So he would take the cars and park them across the street and rent them out to strippers at the bus stop for $30 a day and shit. Fucking tremendous. I got a piece of that action. And he said he couldn't, and people say they can't get jobs. And they couldn't <laughs> fucking, they couldn't, they couldn't find license plates. Whenever you're a dealer, you have dealer license plates. Georgie used to steal them and put them on all the bitches' cars. The bitches would be driving their cars with the dealer plates on them and shit. <laughs> Fucking tremendous, dog. There was a bank robber who worked there, an ex-bank robber. He did 30 years, came out of jail. He was like 60 when he worked there. That was the most unique, eclectic set of people I had ever seen in all my life. Believe me. But I fucking enjoyed it. What are you going to do? How you doing, Lee? All right? I'm doing good. 
I ain't gonna talk about the wedding no more because I'm back to being normal again. Because that <laughs> wedding, that shit took me down. I haven't been that down since I don't know. <laughs> since what's the name? Since I can't <laughs> get <a> pussy no more. <laughs> about 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> That's fucked up when a girl. Good. So I'm gonna can't. get to our. I wanna talk about our wedding rings. Oh. What are well, they made of? Celery? They're made of <laughs> they're, no, actually, they're made of um, the stainless steel. And the, cool. and the diamonds were, don't come from the um, Africa where people get killed. Where they come from? They come from Jersey. Nah. No, it was just a regular ring, you know, not, nothing big. Nothing big. I don't want no big ass ring. You know, there was some, some big old big old See, earthquake ring. Now, did you, you know? do the paperwork on the diamond? Doing to that sure, tomorrow. To make sure no black people died, nobody got Ebola. <laughs> Nobody got to up this bro. fucking diamond and shit. <laughs> what the fuck you laughing about, Lee? It's the truth. The, the they're dying for um. They're dying. I don't think there's a good health care in the diamond mines of Africa. There's <laughs> people are dying for this glass right here for the fucking phone. Why? Yeah, but I can't change my phone. You don't give a fuck anyway. <laughs> no one. If they told you that to make your iPhone. Ten Chinese people died. Would you still fucking talk on the phone? You wouldn't give a fuck about ten dead Chinese people. We all wouldn't. That's how selfish we are. We yeah. would never yeah. think of something like we that. We don't care. Where's the, it's the iPhone factory where people jump off the building? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, like Foxconn. Yeah, they have to put nets because so many people did it. That's fucking craziness. Do what? <laughs> they have nets that's my, that's from my, the building. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to give you so many the edibles <laughs> to one day you eat an edible and jump out the window like the priest <laughs> in The Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> when I, when I, I went... <laughs> I still got it on a Monday night, cocksuckers. Hey, when I went to D.C. last week, I went to go visit those stairs, as a matter of fact. The stairs where the priest jumped off in the exercise. Get the fuck out I of was here. there, bro. Come on. See? I got the fucking photo Who the right fuck do you think you're dealing with here? Some novice? I didn't know that, and I just dropped that. Like, Yeah, fucking. man. I went, it was, it's um, 2900 Prospect Avenue in Georgetown. Is the and building still there? The, the building house is, is still, still there? The house is not there. The, the stairs the, is where the priest jumped off, bro. Jumped out the window, and the cop, too. The and cop the was cop. out of there. And the fucking... Uh, did you see that movie yet, Lee? That's just... Yeah. Yeah. Like, They're like 72 like stairs. a year ago when I first started dating Paul. They're like 72 stairs there, <laughs> and that was crazy, bro. Oh, I shit, I got one more edible left for me and Lee. No, you Where's don't. No, you here don't. it is, look. Yes, I do. Stay away from me. I got it right there, player. Oh, shit. Did they clean the blood up? Yeah. Oh, my God. You walked up the stairs? There it is, Prospect Street. Oh, shit. Look at Felipe. Fucking tourist. He's going to take Bert Kreischer's job soon. What? What? No. Nah. Oh, shit. You know who else came to my show, man? A lot of people from Montebello, from Wild Coyotes. A lot of the, a lot of those bikers showed up. You know the bikers? You see, they showed up deep, bro. They're all like in their 40, late 40s now. Sons of Anarchy. The Mayans? No, the Mongols. The Mongols showed yeah, up. Yeah, they showed up. Instead of the Mayans, the Mongols show The Mongols. Up. Stop it. Stop it, bro. Lee was going to be a biker, but his fucking wheels fell off. So that was the end of that fucking thing. What's up, Lee? Look at you with your little yarmulke representing you Israel do? in the house. What's going on in Israel this week? What's going on the weekend? Nothing Israel? good. Who's throwing rocks, bro? Who's throwing rocks? Everybody. All right, you fucking people. Oh, my God. I love it. How you feeling, Lee? What's on the agenda this week? What's his wedding? Lee's got to go to a fucking... Tell them what wedding you're going to. I have a wedding in Vermont this weekend. Tell them what fucking Harvey Homo signed up. I told him he would have done cheaper. He would have sent 300 in the mail and said, I love you, but I'm busy. Is it a vegan wedding? No, not at all. Fuck no. You're the only one who does those and shit. Stop it. But they, they're having it on a Sunday, so maybe that equals vegan. So, yeah, I just, it, no, it'll be fun. I mean, I've never been in a wedding what before. fucking fun. I don't know. I do. <laughs> I am. I just found out I have to miss a freaking Tom Brady paid Manning game next Sunday. Because of the wedding, that's that's pit. That's Where are they out. playing at? New England. Oh shit! Yeah. What time is the game, man? Four o'clock. Eastern. What time is the wedding? Probably the same thing. Oh, see, they fuck everything. They didn't check the schedule. No. See. You well, they don't like football. You fucked up completely, dog. I'm all right. Send the nickel next time. Next time I will. Send the nickel. Your condolences. Send the yarmulke. <laughs> What's up, dog? Tell me something good. What's up, fool? I can't call it no more. Oh, you're over there fucking bringing me down. Bring me <laughs> up, you fuck. Tell me something good. What's happening? I'm going to be in Fort Myers, bro. Fort Myers what? You Fort Myers, Florida. Florida at the um, Off the Hook Comedy Club. Come on. Next month in November. Come on. And then Pleasanton, Tommy T's. I'm bringing Armando Cosillo. Oh, shit. What about New Year's? Where you New at? Year's Eve, bro. I'm going to be over there with the Savages over there in fucking Reno, Nevada with your boy. Wayne Wright. Come on. 
What's yes. the name of the club? The Underground? The Underground Comedy Club. Actually, going to be for New Year's I'm going to be there for New Year's Eve. Just New Year's Eve, Wednesday night? Wednesday night. Two shows? Two shows. Halloween, bro. I'll be walking around West Hollywood on shrooms. Nah, I'm just kidding. I wish. No. <laughs> That's where I'll be, though. West Hollywood. Vegan? You, the shrooms aren't vegan? Shrooms are vegan, bro. So what's the problem? Pop some shrooms. Ask Ari. I don't know, man. Who's got them, bro? Ari. Ari? All right. You're then. not going to go see Ari for the taping of his special at the comedy store? When is it? Wednesday night. We're going to be at the Ice House. You should go check out Ari. He's got chocolate with mushrooms and a vegan. You eat fucking chocolate, it's all over. I only gave Lee a little piece. Yeah, but he all. gave it to me without me knowing what it was. He's like, here, eat this. I How did you feel? I was, it was actually pretty nice because he didn't give me enough Anything to get Anything like, happened? No. I felt, it felt like a light high, but it was You didn't fun. see the devil because I didn't no. want to take him that Not that. You didn't see me. Not that. You didn't see me. <laughs> no. So then uh, your New Year's with Wayne. That's good, man. So New Year's Eve, I'm there. Um, I'm going to be in Pleasanton, Tommy T's. Off the Hook Comedy Club, Club in What's Fort called? Myers in November. November. How many planes you got to take to get down there? Oh, man, I, I'm probably going to fly to Miami and then Fort Myers. Okay, I know it's like two planes, but it's a good club, I heard. It's a good club. So many clubs are opening up, you know. What else is opening up? What a new club? A uh, new club um, over there. Um, Jim Belushi opened up a club in Fort Myers, too. Come on. It's called Belushi's. And he has a lot of SNL stuff inside the club. That's another club. And, and there's another guy named Rick Bronson. I don't know you know him. Oh, Arizona. He opened yeah. one in Arizona, yeah. He's got a great club in Minneapolis. Yeah. The Mall of Minneapolis. i never done that. I've been wanting to go to. I've never been to the Midwest, Joey. You, you were Toledo? No. I never Toledo. What about, uh, have you worked, you don't work Arizona for nobody? Yeah, we're 10 p.m. probably. Okay, every year. all right. Then you can't work Rick Bronson then. You're good. Yeah. You're good to go. What's, where are you going to work at the next couple of weeks, Lisa? Yeah. We have the live podcast next week. Yeah. This it. week, Wednesday. This week. <coughs> Two days before fucking Halloween, and you don't know next week. Look at this. <laughs> I'm so high. Uh, no, it's I, it's kind of interesting you brought that up. I was watching a show today, and it was Anthony Bourdain. He was talking to this economist, and he was like, there's 7 billion people now. There's not that many jobs. Like, we don't have that need for people. And, like, you were talking about how comedy used to start on a Tuesday, and now it's kind of, like, adapted to, like, this. Like, what do, you, what do you think about, like, in the future, how, how what comedy is going to look like? Maybe you won't travel. Maybe you'll just do live streams in the cities, on like, from here. Like, I was just thinking, like, how it, it like, evolves to fit the needs. I'll do a pay-per-view, bro. That'd be fun. We have to do live camera with a live audience and then have people just pay five bucks. And then... To stream it live. Like, stream it live, but get a real big sponsor to pay for it all. And then you get your cut. I think um um they did it like that at a concert for um that Coachella show. Okay. One of those gum places. They bought the whole show and they aired it live from the internet on YouTube and they got to see the whole concert. The only the only issue is is now you go on the week every you go on the road every week to different cities. If you did a TV like an online pay per view thing, everyone would watch it at once. So yeah, that's it. So you you couldn't do it every week. You would have to come up with a new material every week to make it interesting. Well, if you're a fan of somebody, you know, for three bucks, if I could see Lee Sayat do Toledo and then Lee Sayat do Minneapolis for three bucks, why not? Tape it for three bucks, come home later that night, put it on, laugh a little bit. It's three bucks. It's three bucks. A special course, you whatever. You know, when I travel, I see the same people over. They hear some of the same jokes over. They're not going to fucking go crazy. Turn that thing off, please. <laughs> They're not going to fucking go crazy or nothing. It's the... You gotta sell them the sizzle with stand up. They could see stand up on a million fucking channels now, Felipe. People could see anything. I remember when Monday Night Football was huge. I remember when you saved money, when you had to make a choice between going out on Sunday or going out on fucking Monday. You had to make a choice. Like, I don't, I'm gonna put away 40 bucks, plus maybe somebody will split a gram of Coke with me, 20 bucks to drink. You know, Monday Night Football was huge. God forbid somebody place gave food away. We used to go to the ground round. They used to give out meatballs and little grilled cheese sandwiches. That's where you went. And you had cocktails. What happened to Monday Night Football? It's dead. Tuesday nights, you know, if you have a bar today, what is your lineup at a bar? Let's say Felipe, five years from now, moves to Pleasanton, California, buys Rooster Tea Feathers. Yeah. You got, a, you got a business that you pay a lease on seven days a week. Do you, as an economist, as a business owner, what do you do? Do you just open up Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so four nights a week the place stays shut? What do you do in this economy? You're going to pay for the place anyway. 
if you turn the lights on, it's going to be a fraction of the cost anyway. So you open up. You open up Sunday and you make something for the people. Guess what? You're going to have to, it's going to cost you $100 to put a tray of sandwiches out. But if that's what it takes to take people there, you know, I go to these hotels every week and these hotels are giving you more and more. I went to Baltimore. I stayed at a hotel that they give you $400 a night. There was no coffee machine in my room. There was no coffee in the lobby till 6. Both nights, the fucking wake-up call was wrong. You know, so why am I paying for it? Last week, I went to a Best Western. I thought I was the prince of fucking Dubai. Yeah. Eggs, oatmeal, waffles, apples, oranges, fruit, white bread, rye bread, English muffin, coffees, 24 hours, fresh coffee, a coffee maker in your room, a gym that wasn't bad, a heated pool, a pool outside, you know, wake-up call, a business office with three different terminals that you don't have to pay for. So when I'm, 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 I'm uh, flying with my family, I know that I can wake up and have breakfast already taken care of. Do you know what fa- a, a breakfast costs a family of three to go on vacation? 50, a, 60 bucks? A lot. Yeah. I just saved 60 bucks. Guess what? People are going to go there. People are going to get attracted to those hotels. They give you a little something. Well, the same thing has to happen now. The podcast, the last two months, I've gotten contacted by three different people to charge money for the podcast. Why would I do something like that? Why would I change the rules? Why would I go home and take my ball at now? I want to give this away. I want people right. to listen to yeah. it. Do you understand me? You know, yeah, people, oh, well, you could sell it for $7 a month and get 100,000 subscribers and get 70000 a month. You know what? I want people to come to my show. I want people to listen to what's in my heart and what's in my mind, what's in Lee's heart and his mind, and what's in your fucking heart. And don't tell me about menus. Mostly no THC at the moment. You don't know, and that's the thing. That's the fucking difference. I could charge for it. I don't want to do that. Right. You know, so there's, it's, 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 uh, it's, you have to give something. Tuesday nights, it was okay to get a microphone, some dude with a bad wig who never had the balls to go to Broadway and sing, and you had karaoke night. How Tuesday. many, how many karaoke nights are there? That, that, that yeah. went done. So what do you do on a Tuesday night, Lee, in your bar? I don't what know. do you do, Lee? Do you give away six beers for a dollar a bucket? That's not going to make people come in. That's yeah. going to make fucking alcoholics come in and bust your balls. You have a comedy contest. No, you have to <laughs> You have to do something, you know. Comedy contest works on a Wednesday night, and, you know, $500, and the winner goes and does a set at Lee Syed's house. And tapes I will it. rent out the comedy club during a day for conventions and then give, offer them free tickets yeah. for the, for the, ne- for the you, tonight. You can't do comedy seven nights a week. No. So you have to pray like tomorrow night, game six. That's a big bar game. Thank you. The bars make money tomorrow night. Yeah, if you ever show in the East Coast, nobody watching it, huh? No, they're, they're happy that there's the World Series tomorrow. But what do you do? This is a tough fucking economy. There's a thousand fucking bars. There's a like, bar in every strip mall, guys. So you're trying to get all these people. Seven, how many million? Seven billion. Seven billion people. You're trying to get a percentage of these people into your fucking bar. Yeah. What do you do, Lee? It's a fucking risky business. It right? is, it is, man. Because um, now think about it, man. Last week I was at the I was at the Ice House, sold out stage shows. Now I'm thinking, I was thinking the whole time. As a comedian, you know, you're happy, but you think bad. You think you think the worst. Could I would could I would have could I have done that if the Dodgers were in the World Series? At the Ice House, you know, can I compete with the Dodgers? Can a comedy club in Los Angeles compete? Was game six? No, no way, right? No. If that's your comedy no. night, if you're premiering your comedy night, you would have done good. You yeah. would have done good because not everybody has the, you know, you could tape games. Yeah, you now could tape and, games. Watch them know, on Hulu. But you would have done great. Yeah, I think you would have done good. I think there's a market for people who watch the Dodgers. You know, uh, the Lakers are starting next week. That's it. That changes the face of comedy Dude, in L.A. I did with a sh- me, you and I. We got yeah. burnt by a thousand Lakers games. <laughs> well, Coyotes. Thousand Lakers games. You're ready to go. You got a spot at 930. You got a spot at 1015. You got another spot at 1145. You got another spot. All of a sudden, you get to the first spot. What's going on, dog? How come the show hasn't started? Dog, this is a motherfucking Lakers game. Oh, it's man. It's the third quarter. You're like, God damn it. I need this 50 fucking bucks. This is all part of the equation. <laughs> now you're late for this one. You're late for the other one. You're late for the other one. You're late for the other one. Now I got to fucking follow this fucking jerk off. He's going to jump up and down, <laughs> do the joke about the dog. I don't need this shit in my fucking life. So that's what it would do. It would just ruin. The Lakers will fuck your night up. People don't, yeah, listen, man, people still want to watch them. I don't care how bad they are if the fucking point <clears throat> guard's out for the season. 
These are diehard Laker fans. Same thing with the fucking Dodgers. People watch them. I remember being in Houston 10 years ago when the Houston Rockets were in the playoffs. Yeah. They were popular. You, I didn't give a fuck who was fucking, who was in town. You know, when the Dallas Cowboys play against the Giants and they play in Dallas, if it's a 7 o'clock game, I don't give a fuck if you're Houdini and you're going to stab somebody in the pussy. They're not fucking coming to see you, dog. <laughs> They're not coming to watch you. Not when the Dallas, never mind Denver. Oh, if you got a game on a Sunday night and Denver's on nationally televised Sunday night, you're in no danger. Sold out? Yeah, you're in no danger. You have four fucking people there with helmets on. <laughs> it's a fucking uh. nightmare. No, 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 no. It's amazing what you compete with. as You know, businesses and I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people could run a bar. Do you get pissed off? Because my dad was in nightclubs for the one of the things he did. And he would have like singles parties. And anytime it snowed or rained or there's something like that, he would get pissed off. Like when you see the weather or do you see, like when you're going to Baltimore, the Orioles almost got in. And I was like, fuck, I hope. Because like, do you think like negatively about that? Like, God, that's going to kill my shows. The Orioles being in the playoffs and that wouldn't have helped me in Baltimore. <laughs> if Hannibal Lecter was giving haircuts, <laughs> it wouldn't have helped me in fucking Baltimore this last week. I had like mediocre shows. Oh, okay. Man, I was it's a, a new club. So if they moved it, people were going to the old address, you know. Oh, fuck. But it's a great club. I love it. What club was that? The Joke Factory. It moved. Joke because Factory. somebody got blasted. Damn. Somebody went to, what's the dude from Mad TV, the black kid? Harry Spears. Harry Spears, Harry Spears shows, and after this, some, he threw somebody out, and the guy went outside and shot the doorman, or the doorman oh, shot him, so that wasn't good for Damn. publicity for the club. So the club, you know, who wants a comedy club where somebody's been shot at? <laughs> so they just picked up and moved? They just picked up. Well, you know, when you have a <laughs> wow. dead body in your fucking doorway, you know, uh, even if you're fucking creepy, you're like, you know what, it's time to go. Yeah, the same, thing, same thing happened at that club we did um, in Weird Oceans. Oh, my God. So they shot the security guard. Oh, my God. I remember going there the night afterward, and there was candles right outside the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what did you do with the candles? Uh, oh, like, my God. They shot the guy the night before. No, what did you do with them? I didn't do... No, I picked them up and read them. I didn't do nothing. Lee. I okay. just fucking walked past them and said, I can't believe I'm doing comedy the place where somebody got shot last night. And they opened up the yeah, bar. Yeah, but it, it was And Sunday they were at night. the bar drinking shots. Like, to the spirit of Raymond. And Raymond's <laughs> I was there, man, when the owner fell off the wagon, bro. And he was fucking just pouring everybody free drinks. Oh and they got fucked up, man. Oceans. That was Martin Moreno's room. Martin, you know what, Lassa? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that one time I went in there and some girl started talking to me. She's like, so you been in movies, man? I'm like, I get lucky from time to time. She just walked over. Like, I had like a 10-minute set in the middle. The show wasn't over. And she told me that she had just gotten out of county jail. And for 20 or 25 bucks, she showed me a pussy. It was fuck. Did you just show it to you? Fuck no. This chick was all tatted up and... She was chunky and shit, and her pussy probably smelled like a jail cell. I don't want to smell that shit. She's like, for 25 bucks, I'm just looking for a little piece, Papa, you know. <laughs> she was like, I got an old man, so I can't fuck you. But I'll show it to you and let you finger me. Get the fuck out of here. That was Oceans. That was fucking Oceans. Oh, man. What, what that was Oceans. What happened to me at Tortillas? I was there, dude, and then um, I saw some girl that I would see at Casa Latina. And she used to roll deep, you know, crazy J party animal. Then I hadn't seen her for a long time. And I, I, I saw her at Tortillas. And I, and I was drinking at the time. And, and I saw her. Hey, I remember you, man, from back in the days. She goes, yeah, I remember you too. She took me to the bathroom. She lifted up her skirt. She said, I just got out. I just beat a, I just beat a murder rap. I just want to party, man. So I was like, fuck, her pussy was hairy, dog. Like Bush, and she was in line, bro. When, they, when I started Bush that hairy, I knew that she was locked up, and she did beat a murder rap, and murder was the case that they gave her. Shit, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I was I, we got crazy, man. But you know, I didn't have no condom at the time. I just jerked off, you know, in a little afro, and then she just took off with a bunch of like she took off, bro. And I remember she was freaking with like five cholos after me. You know, she was gonna get. She was on a mission, bro. She beat a fucking murder rap. Don't hate on her. What would you do, bro, if you beat a murder rap? 
Fuck you. We want to fuck everything that moves. Yeah. I, I so just, does she. Listen, all he wants is a six-inch fucking Subway Coca <laughs> combo right now. Look at him. Oh. Look at the hats twisted. What are you thinking about? He was a media what, noche what right now. What are you right now tonight when you go home? Kanish. I don't know Give right now. Yeah, I go for Kanish. He said, I'm not going to eat nothing because okay. I just beat a plateau. Shut up. I <laughs> did. It's hard. It is so hard. And eat then tonight? I have fucking edibles with them. I have so munchies with them. what are you going to eat tonight? What are you going to eat tonight? I'm going to try to do nothing. Carnitas. But what do you have? What do you have for emergency situation? I know you got those fucking rice patties. Well, I'd rather be cakes, a fucking yeah. ISIS fucking... I'd rather be an, an ISIS back game. They're not bad. Like the caramel ones are fucking, good. The camel ones? Caramel. Camel. No. Caramel. I'd rather be at an ISIS isolation camp to eat those fucking <laughs> rice cakes. What else you got? <laughs> what else you got? I got granola bars. They're not pretty bad. good. Yeah, peanut you got butter pepperoni. granola bars. I do, yeah. Five slices of how many calories? Fifty. And how much bread? Two slices. How much cheese? And you put One that slice. cheddar cheese on it, you yeah. fucking fill Light cheddar. Bone. How many calories? I think we figured out it was like two fifty, two sixty or something. Unbelievable. You call calories? I've been yeah. doing it, yeah. He's doing good. He lost how many pounds? Sixty five. Sixty fucking five. Look at him. Damn, bro. Thank Look at him. Man. He's a savage. But this does this is that help. water, please. Oh yeah. Uh, you want another one, Joey? Couple minutes. Um, no, yeah, it, it, it's been going good. But we, when we have edibles, I want to go to back to Jack in the Box and get how many ten orders you of tacos. How many minutes today? An hour. An hour. How many calories you burn? Eight hundred. Now you moving those feet? Now they're fucking flying, right? Yeah, not you, that bad. I don't go. Your feet are fucking moving like. It, I do like four and a half miles. I think it says so. It's not that fast. You walk four and a half miles. Wow. The elliptical, so not and really. What speed oh. do you move at? Uh, the incline's eleven, and the resistance is eight. So you, but how fast are you moving? Six four and a half, and that took an hour. Hour was four and a half miles. No, I don't no. know. It says know, it's fast. There's, there's a speed on there. You I don't fuck. look at the speed. I put my iPad it says, over it. It says six or or five point three or three point five. I don't know. Jesus Christ! You I, I put my about? iPad over and I watch movies. Okay. You see wow. Um, the funny is you put you put your app and you watch movies and you walk. Yeah, I just do the little thing because it's boring otherwise. And like I, even even music, like you kind of like just start fading. So I watch stupid action movies. Crazy. When I went to the dentist, I'm afraid of dentists because always, I'm always painful. They always like jam so hard. I could see the guy jamming. I don't want to see him pull. So this guy's like it's like a dentist for pussies, right? So they put a, a headphone set on me and one of these visors so I could look at a movie. I had that in Boston. Yes, and I'm watching Netflix and like me like an idiot. I'm watching Walking Dead. And with the, don- the the walkers eating somebody, they're drilling. My mouth going. Eh. I I watched Man on Fire at the dentist in Boston. Well, well, they were working in your mouth. You can yeah. see the movie, right? Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Not bad. Did, was he worked on you throughout the whole? Not the well, whole let's movie. Let's say he drills on you up to the part where they <laughs> kidnap. Where do you go? I want to go home now. Fuck no, doc. Keep <laughs> drilling, <know>. bitch. <laughs> Keep drilling, bitch. There's gotta be a cavity. Pour in there another somewhere. tooth. Put it on the bill, cocksucker. He's still got to go shoot a bunch of Mexicans. <laughs> I've been biting boarding, bro, at the beach. I've been going to the beach twice a week. Do you still? Still, bro. All right. I get, for real, man, I'm getting good, dog. So what do you do? I got body board. I, it's like surfing, but you lay on a, you lay on a body board. It's easy. You, you're like laying down on a bed, but you're catching waves. And how deep water is it? Oh, man. It's like sometimes it's six feet. But, I, dude, I got bit by a stingray, man, in, in, um, in Newport. Yeah, fool! I got I got bit by a fucking stingray, man. He's Living. interrogating you like he's a, like a cop, and you're about to like explode with like the evidence you have. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, cops. Like, Everything. What the fuck? Like, what are you doing? Fucking body surfing, but you're Mexican. You should be in a mariachi band, cocksucker. Everything oh. you're saying, he's going to like a deeper level of anger. <laughs> Not so. You look too left, and it'd be like, it'd be like something weird. I, I, real just, fun, I got pictures, but I got hit by No, weird. no, no, no. I don't want to see no pictures. I just oh. want you to break it. But yeah, I need a water, please. Okay. I get Thank through on 8 in the morning. The yarmulke fell. <laughs> <laughs> nice oh. t-shirt, bro. Thank you, man. Oh, my God. You have a cool shirt on, too? Yeah, to open that for your Uncle Joey. My <laughs> finger's fun. You're so high. You can't open the water. Oh, my finger's fun. You see, I got a Band-Aid on that cut. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got a fucking paper cut the other day. I was <laughs> on the lane. Also, the lady goes, look at your finger. What happened? I go, I don't know. I was bleeding to death. I'm surprised I didn't faint. 
So talking about this body fucking surfing. Oh man, man. so I, mean, I, dude, was, I was a little thirsty. Hey, here. here's your part of this. Um, for the first time, well, I've been I've been going out there since like since May, trying to get good at it. And the first time I went out to Malibu, I, I, I don't know. There's different types of waves. There's dropping waves, and then there's curving waves or regular waves. I I, I fucking got lifted up on a wave that drops six feet. And I just fucking, like, when the wave dropped me, there was no more water under me. The wave was behind me, and I was, I got crushed, and my face, I almost, my face was all bleeding, and I almost broke my neck. I survived. Is it like a boogie board? A boogie board, yeah. Oh, okay. It's a body board, yeah. Why'd you take this fucking Google switch? I've been done it for, like, 20 years. Yeah, so that, I've been doing that lately. And you go with no shirt on? I go with no <laughs> shirt on. And, and um, I, I got cut in a rip, bro. A rip is when, um. There's two. T- there's a wave. It's, it's taking the people out out in the ocean, and a lot of people drown. So I was caught into that shit, dude. I was fucking scared. I fucking uh, the water took me a hundred yards. I uh. get back in. Oh man, I swam sideways to the other side of the beach, and then I let the wave take me back. And then I saw a lifeguard. He told me, "What the fuck you doing over there, fat boy?" No, you say, "What the fuck you doing over there?" So let me ask you something. So you you get a different surfboard and a body board. It's different. Yeah, a boogie board is a it's a it's smaller than a surfboard. You don't stand on it. You lay down on it. You hold on to it like this. You know, like <laughs> like, 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 like like your joke, a Cuban on a two by four. All right. So do you put the ankle bracelet on and to keep no, the boogie board? Yeah, have fin- I have fins. You have fins. Yeah. Okay. See, what were you laughing about the fucking fins before? You know, fins. That's a fins, you're bro. you're driving around Denver and Colorado with fins. In you the never back. know when you need fucking fins. You never fucking know. You might see a river, bro. You, you know. might see a river. There's a diamond down there. There's a twenty something. You gotta, look, you gotta dig out now, a body. How many days a week do you go down there? Twice a week. What days you go down there? I might go like Tuesdays or Thursdays. I get up. Get me and my and Lisa fiance. We go to like eight in the morning. We get there, and we're right bodyboarding when. With a bunch of other people that we, we don't know them, but there's surfers there. Pretty interesting. Oh, but my getting back to the story. On Fourth of July, it's the, the day that I'm there. Most of the day, a lightning hits the ocean and five people get killed. What? Yeah, man. Oh, and I was just ocean. on the other side. See? I don't know why I dropped that in there, but it, yeah. No, no, no. It's why do girls game. always want to do stuff early in the morning on the weekends? Why does Paula want to do some early in the morning on the weekend? What she she used to. We used to go out for breakfast every time. But I, I got a coffee maker now so I can stay home. You got a coffee maker? Yeah. And you make breakfast now? Yeah. You save it 20 too. That's I know. It's bucks. expensive. Five days a week for breakfast. What the fuck you think this is and shit? You yeah. Know? This fool got better the better. Better get some fucking eggs and some salsa on those motherfuckers. The flying Jew bed and breakfast. Because let me tell you something. That'd be nice. To me, I really enjoy. So I like some nice eggs. With some green onions, little cheese. I had a real egg for the first time. This yeah. week. A real egg? In a while, because I've been on egg whites. But fucking, I had to have a real egg. You eat egg whites every day? You I had You throw the yolk? No, no, I do pie in the carton. Are you man. a fucking mo- It saves a lot of calories, man. Our, my, my mom, our breakfast, man, used to be like two eggs over easy. Oh, yeah. With ranchero sauce, like Hell tomatoes yeah. and jalapenos and onions cooked on the same pan. That's it, And bro. poured over the fried eggs. That'd be nice. With beans inside and rice and some fresh cheese on the beans. Paula made my favorite. Home, homemade flour tortillas. I don't know what you guys called, but my mom called it eggs in a basket. It's like toast with an egg in the middle. I saw that in a movie, bro. Oh, Still so Magnolias. The first time I saw that. Um, this Italian woman, she did that with uh, egg and uh, bread, and she put um, mozzarella and oh spaghetti sauce over it. Was it uh, good? I get I get the roll and just get the egg yolk. Yeah. Or you get the egg and you break the yolk and you fry the egg up and then you put some cheese on it and a slice of tomato with some fucking butter or something. Good googly moogly. Yeah. That's the way they used to do that at the, at the Sunset Grill. That's New Jersey style. A cedar roll, cut that motherfucker in half with a Coke in a can for breakfast. What? There's nothing better than buttered toast, like actual butter. So when it gets like, when the butter really gets in when there. When the butter gets in there, you put an egg yolk on that motherfucker and bite right through Let's it. Let's go to Denny's right now. That's not you're had, you're you're had, those communist eggs. You ever had chilaquiles? No, Paul's been telling me about it. You, you, like, you got to deep fry some tortilla chips, regular tortilla packs, you know, with oil, and then add el pato sauce. It has to be el pato sauce over it. Then you fucking scramble the egg in it with it. And then while it's cooking, bro, you throw in some cheese, Monterey Jack. You serve that motherfucker up. Bro. Yeah, her mom puts chorizo in it, I think. Yeah, oh shit. Oh shit. 
Yeah, once the mother and you move up here, you're going to be walking from here to Beirut. Oh, yeah. Every fucking day. It's over. It's curtains for you. You can't control that urine. You'll be over there in the morning. You'll move them in. I when are you going to move them in? Why don't you just fucking move them in? You live with the mother, the cousin, the whole <laughs> I thing. I love the mother. No. Say, I'm look, just... you live here, just cook, wash my laundry, and keep the house fucking spotless and shit. <laughs> my mom would kill me if I moved another person's mom in. What was she? You don't, she don't have to know. It's not her business. <laughs> When she comes out, you put her in a hotel, she can't go to your place because it's got fucking Ebola. <laughs> you tell her whatever the fuck you got to tell her. What else is going on? You tell on? her, my nanny this is my nanny and their house burned down, so they're, staying, they're spending the night. <laughs> you still going to acting class? Hell no. That's it? You're done? Two Hell no, a man. Month? I'm done, man. I was paid too much money. How much? It was like $300 to fifty A month? Yeah. Yeah, that's too much money. They, 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 Some guy called me, hey, man, uh, I want to ask you something. Don't, uh, there's an acting class, and they're looking for good, good people, and... I go, what night is it? You know, I like to go. And he goes, Tuesdays from 7 to 10, it's 260 a month. I go, what? Yeah, that's what I was paying. What? What are you talking about, 260 a month? That's a fucking card payment. For to four do, classes? Four classes, 260 a month, 7 to 10. You know what? I don't even have the ADD to sit there anymore to watch those scenes. I could maybe watch one or two scenes and get the fuck out of there. Whenever I went to, like, acting class down at Havana Chubbuck's, I, I did one of the first top three scenes. I got the fuck out of there. You could stay. I would stay sometimes and watch because you learn from acting sometimes. You learn as much as doing the scene than watching it sometimes. You learn because you're like, I know what the scene is and what he should be doing and what he should have been doing. But, oh, look what he just did. Oh, shit, look what he just did. I didn't even see that coming. So that's how you learn how to fucking act sometimes. I always, when people hit me up, I always tell them, go to a local place locally that teaches like an acting class. You'll learn so much. You really will. And if you're good at it, then you excel. And people tell you where the fuck to go, right or wrong. They go, hey, go to this place. They do a dance group, and you can jump up and down and be Shakespeare. I never wanted to do Shakespeare. You? Why not? I don't know. To be or not to be? That is the question. <laughs> you got a fucking point there. I was praying, when I was doing, um, I, I did two acting classes. Um, Pat Buckle, my manager, hooked me up with another of uh, my first acting coach, which I liked. It wasn't that much. It was 75 bucks for like two hours every time I met her. And she taught, I think she was like a Brad Pitt fan. But I got to memorize a lot of scenes with her, like true romance. No, no. That scene in um, Thelma Louise when Brad Pitt shows up and he's, he has sex with um, Angela Davis, I think that's her name. And that was a scene that I, I learned over and over, and I she made me, and I had to learn it. And after a while, I got good at it, you know. But that money got tight, bro. But now, man, I don't think I need, I don't think I need an acting class anymore. But acting classes are good, man. If you want to go, if you're like an ugly guy and you want to hang out with hot chicks, eh? There's a lot of hot chicks, bro, in acting classes. Sometimes I, I feel like the acting coach throws in the hot chicks in the classroom to entice. Guys like me to throw in another 300 for another month. It's not a bad idea. It's a hot chick, bro. Like they're so <clears throat> coming in for the acting class, and you're there, man. Can I go over there? Man, uh, Chubbuck had the blonde chick, and he had she had Holly Berry. We had three, two, two blonde chicks. We had a, sweet, a girl who was from Switzerland in my class, and her friend who wanted to be a rapper. No, no, but Ivana Chubbuck made her name by having what's the chick who won the Oscar, the blonde, the tall one that's dating Sean Penn now. She was in the, the Italian job. I forget. She just did a movie that I watched the Shirley other day. Theresa Theresa Ther Theresa And then the next year, she had Holly Berry. She always had Holly Berry. And once they won the Oscar, every hot chick. Robert medical. Wright? No, no, no. Therese Sharon. She <laughs> just fucking said it, Felipe. But uh, she's not married to Sean Penn, is she? She's hooked up with Sean Penn now. Robin Wright's done. All right, cool then. Yeah, she, she, she was house of cards. The, yeah, she's done. She's available. All right. And she ain't going to have no Italian food at her fucking wedding. All right? She's going <laughs> to have, like, fucking... You're going to get some Mexican food for your Uncle Joey? We'll try it, bro. Come on, bro. Just get a tray from Ocho. Joey. Don't embarrass <laughs> me. I got to go there and sit next to Spanish people eating fucking vegan food and shit. I'm getting upset all over again. <laughs> I won't be able to sleep tonight, though. <laughs> You'll be a non-vegan side. You'll be all right. No, no, no. Is it a side? Gonna... Huh? You're keeping them separated? What? And that shit smells to fucking <laughs> high heaven. You know that shit smells fucking bad, dog. Please, have some El Cholo nice tamales. Maybe for fajitas there or something? No, no, no. Listen, dog. <laughs> Listen, this is easy. No fajitas, because I know it'll be a by the way somewhere. Tofu. Just have a little thing that says El Cholo on it to make people at ease. They'll be Cholos. 
by the way, I get so fucking upset at this shit. When you get married to this Mexican bro, you better do the right thing too, cocksucker. I will. I want some have dry food, fish. some lox, some bagels, and on the other side, That'll some nice. fucking red sauce, some enchiladas. That's a wedding, man. I don't like that. Chilarrienos. Yeah, yeah, I'd go for one of those tonight myself. What do you think, Lee? I'll go for it. No, you fucking can't. You got to get it together, cocksucker. Let me give some shout-outs here. Okay. There's some beautiful people here. Felipe's in the house. You bad motherfuckers, you. All right, my main man, Matthew Bailey, Kenny Mincher, Chris Adamson, Bobby Crook, Mike Stanley, Paul Speller, Renee and Carcion Nome, my main man, <laughs> and Brady Lynn. When are you going to fucking call me? You want me to call you? What the fuck's going on here, people? All right. I don't even know what to talk about no more. It's not that I'm high. <laughs> it's just that I'm out of fucking words. You, you threw me a detour with this. What wedding. happened, bro? You fucked me up with this wedding, dog. You can't be talking to me about a Mexican <laughs> getting married and having no Mexican food at his wedding. I want you to represent your culture in some way, and then you throw curveballs at me like, oh, I'm going to have this. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I don't give a fuck about the cookie section. I go to hit hard. I want some <laughs> nice fucking chili, rellenos. Don't be some good food, man. How about some enchiladas with some nice green sauce on them? I don't ask for much. It could be the <laughs> buffet for me. You know who's got a nice fucking cheap menu? Uh, Acapulco. I could eat those cheese enchiladas with some rice. You like Acapulco? On Sunset, fucking tremendous. I don't know how many times that buffet fucking say That buffet's good, That man. buffet's delicious at Acapulco. I used to hit that once a month. You ever hit that, Lee? No. Damn, is it still there? Yeah. It's the last time I went there was when for after Marilyn funeral. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's still there, man. It's really not bad. You would think a, a, buff a Mexican buffet wouldn't be that good. It's easy. It's plain. They have soup, right? They always give they you have, like a chicken soup. soup. A chicken soup, yeah. A chicken soup. Then they have a, a cheese enchilada, some type of chicken, some type of beef. I usually get three or four cheese enchiladas. They got delicious Mexican rice. And you put the green chili sauce and the Mexican rice and dope it up, some onions. They have a tray of onions. And then on the way out, they got a nice fucking dessert. You can't go wrong. I'm not kidding you. That's the first place I ate when I moved to Los Angeles. Where? January 29th, 1997. I stopped at fucking right there, right on Sunset. Acapulco? As we pulled off the 101. But remember, the place you told me that was really good, and I always tell people, man, if you like chicken to tacos that are made good, Los Tacos. Where? Those tacos right there on Santa Monica Boulevard. We used to, to play, go there after the comedy. The place with the watermelon juice. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. We should that go place there. was good. Not anymore, right? No. Still there. It's still there. I don't right know. next to a 7 Eleven a long Yeah, yeah. Back. I haven't still been there. there in 10 years. Yeah, I've been there. I to, we talked about it. They used it's to still have, there. Still, still there. They used to have a chicken burrito with white meat in the middle. Yeah. With some rice. And uh, instead of uh, baked beans, uh, not baked beans, but instead of refried beans, yeah. I get the Black pinto beans. beans. Up and oh, down. Yeah. fuck. With that green shit, the fucking cilantro, yeah, cilantro. and some onions. What? With some sour cream in that motherfucker? Come on now. Yeah, man. Come they, on now. This the Mexican restaurant, Los, Fla uh, Los Tacos, they have a big old um, mural. And the mural is all the Last Supper. But the Last Supper characters are all Mexican actors. Like they got Mil Mascaras as Jesus. And then some other motherfuckers and something else. But that place is still there, man. And they got real, they give you some cream as much as you want. We did a. <laughs> but if you get to at two thirty in the morning, man, Los Tacos turns into Los Tacones. Oh yeah, it's with me, with me, high heels. It's all tr Mexican trannies there, man. Let me tell you something, man. Uh, a couple of years ago, Nick Tatora called me and he says he's doing a movie, blah 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 blah, and he's a real funny Spanish guy. And I'm telling him right off the bat, like. Listen, it's Felipe Spars. Uh, I'm looking for this guy. I can't find him. It's fucking Felipe Spars. Uh, I don't know. I don't. You know, we we I reached out to Paul Rodriguez. I go, that's great. But the guy you're looking for is Felipe Spars. So finally, he sees Felipe. Lisa drives him, and he calls me. He goes, Oh my God, this guy's great. He reminds me of my brother. Yeah, I'm fucking hiring him. How many days did you get on that movie? I like seven. What was the name of that movie? The movie was uh, Deported. Whatever happened. The movie was on Netflix for a while, then they took it out. Why? Because it was that bad? Because they're not paying. I don't know what happened. It was probably that bad. I don't know. Oh, my God. I, I twisted my ankle at the last scene, bro. Really fucking bad. It was I me, you, Paul Rodriguez, me, me, you Nick. Nick Paul was. Rodriguez, uh, Rick. Um, Talia Shire was in it, but she was in our scenes. Um, 
There's a lot of motherfuckers, bro, in that movie. Oh my god! And it was in a fucking in the mountain by Magic Mountain, by by sitting out in uh, Valencia, and it was cold as a motherfucker. It was man. cloudy and rainy. I remember yeah. they sent us home one yeah. day because of the rain. And then Joe Diaz, they, he could he shaved his mustache off, and he didn't. You had a mustache? Yeah, he. You couldn't even see it. He did a mustache for the scene. So the next uh, one, the next day, he shaved his mustache off, and he comes back with no mustache. And they have to they, they put like a prosthetic mustache on his fucking on his on his fucking um on his on his lip. That is fucking crazy. And they paid pretty good, man. We had a, we had tra- our own trailers. <clears throat> yeah, we got we got pretty high during the sets. Good food. The director had the worst good. hairdo. Oh yeah, you ever ever. He was ever. a typical director, man. Typical leather wannabe ch- director. I do never jacket, worked again in his fucking jacket. life. That dude will never work again in his life. They'd rather shoot him in the fucking head than <clears throat> do fucking work again. That was horrible. He did something that I was like, this guy. There's these dog movies that keep calling me, the ones I did. But yeah. the first four or three were done by this one director who wasn't bad. I liked Mike. That was his name, Mike. But then they got this other guy, and he comes from the editing background. So he shoots everything halfway. So let's say right now we're shooting a scene, right? Yeah. So if we're facing this way today, he'll shoot this scene from over here, and he'll cut it. And we won't shoot again until he's facing this way three days later. So you live in this scene for a fucking month, which I don't like. So now you have six scenes hanging because he only shoots from one side. Do you follow me? That's weird. Why would, I, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's the worst. I told him when I fucking I didn't want to do the movie and that that was... One of the reasons that, fuck that shit. Shoot the fucking movie how it's supposed to be shot, cocksucker. Shoot it and let's shoot, move on with the f- fucking lives. I don't want to keep shooting this fucking scene over and over again. That's not my fucking bag, you know what I'm saying? I remember Joe Diaz um, told that director that a movie that they poured it after over and over of him, like, I think they, they want him to go back. Like, he got punched. And then they, they said he shot it. And he goes, all right, man. It's fine, man. We did it okay. And then Paul Rodriguez said, yeah, it's fine. We did it okay. And because he, he wanted to shoot it over and over, then Joe Diaz started directing his own scene. Now nah, we're good. We're good, man. Fuck yeah. I can't stand when people overshoot anything. It was, small, it was no big deal. It was a small scene. It, it, I don't Him like coming when people, out. it burns me up. It burns me I did a commercial for GoDaddy that almost knocked everybody out in the fucking commercial <laughs> because I think that they were, they were trying to piss me off. Like they were trying to shoot, kill time, so they kept making me do the scene over, like 50 times. The, the scene, flower on the face? Something. Yeah, 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 something. Remember you were asking me, did I know you then when I shot that Yeah, commercial? I think so. It's just... Uh, yeah, that was like a year ago. Let me give us some fucking sponsors here. Let's get the fuck out of here. As usual, my main men, the people who put me together, they keep me together. Whether it's Alpha Brain, whether it's the hemp protein powder... Whether it's the Shroom Tech, which I took two today, and I went to jiu-jitsu. <laughs> I came home, then I went and worked out at John Evans' house. On it. On it will fucking take you to that next fucking level. I mean, that's what it does. It's to get the best out of you. Whether it's the, the, the kettlebells or the, the fucking flying balls. <laughs> what they're trying to do is make you strong in more area than others or in, in every area. What the fuck am I saying? This weed is affecting me. But Alpha <laughs> Brain, it works for me, man. It works for me when I'm writing. It works for me when I'm on stage. I like to take two of them. I only do it every, like, I do it in a, a 30-day cycle because when I do it too much, then I got nowhere to go, if you know what I mean. It, like, it wears off or something like that. Listen, make it work for you. You got a money-back guarantee. Free. We don't even want the tablets back. Go to onnit.com. See what they got. See what they got on the page. They have something that will suit your needs, whether it's the enzymes, whether it's a Stay On It program. Just give it a shot. Go to onnit.com and press in. Church. Into the box. To get 10% off. And after that, they'll send you emails with special deals. Like they said, they also have the Stay On It program where they'll send them automatically to you on the first of the month. No vitamin company is doing that for you. Number two, Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> who I love it in my. I was looking at how many fucking packages of razors I have today. And it's amazing. I've been with Dollar Shave Club for this long. And they're t- tremendous. You either got a dollar, six dollars, or nine dollars. You can't fucking beat that and hit beat this. You don't have to go to a store and wait online and fucking hang out with a bunch of zombos and, you know, pay too much for fucking. That's what it's all about. They save you money and time. It gets shipped right to your house at the beginning of the month. No questions asked. You get four fucking razors, double edge with the aloe strip. Go to Dollar Shave Club right now and press in. Church. Up, uh, boom. 
Bang. Get that <laughs> sent right to your fucking house. Get the deal of a lifetime, all right? And to my main men, I love these people with all my heart. The product is fucking ridiculous. Ridiculous how good it is. Hit e cigs, tremendous. Longer lasting, better flavor. Put it up against anybody who's out there in the market. They'll blow your fucking wigs off. You understand me? The beautiful thing is about them, the new year is coming. You want to quit smoking? Joey, how the fuck do I quit smoking? Do I take a pill? Do I fucking smack everybody? Do I call everybody a motherfucker? Fuck no. Hit e cigs not only has that, but they have a program. 24, 16, 8 milligram, and zero. You fucking decrease it at your own pace, man. It's a beautiful fucking product. Go to hitty6.com right now. Press in. Joey's Church. Oh, shit. And what do they get? 20% off. Not 10% off, not 15. 20% off. You understand me? Longer lasting, better tasting. The cigar, you can blow smoke in people's faces. Nobody get pissed <clears> off at <throat> you, right? Hitty6. We might get pissed off. What the fuck are you doing? What's up, fool? Can I mention my podcast? You can do whatever the fuck. We ain't going what's, nowhere. Where what's up, from? fool? Felipe Esparza, man. Check out my podcast on SoundCloud, everywhere. What's up, fool? Podcast. How many weeks are you working a week now, a year on the road? On the road, um, probably like three times, tw- twice, twice two week, a month. Two weeks on a month, yeah. Is that good for you, two weeks, two weeks a month? Yeah. That's good. You can't do three like me. I can't. I get burnt. They never give me three. Well, every once in a while, I got to do three, but not all the time. You're a bad motherfucker. You're not going to acting class. You getting much calls for movies lately? Yeah, man. I, um, I, did, I I booked two two um two commercials. I booked a movie with um with some dude, you know, some, some movie. But, but the financing. But the my, financing went didn't yeah. go through. He's getting sued, so we'll see what happens. Um, I, I shot a Eric Andre show. It'll be out in December. Eric Andre, I'm sure. Yeah, on the Eric Andre show. Okay, what channels are on? on the Adult Swim, he's with Hannibal Burris. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real, little show. Okay. 12 minute show. You're a bad motherfucker, Felipe. You got it going on. I'm host. I did a stand up comedy show in Spanish with um, Estrella TV, the same channel we did with Platanito. Come on. They booked me for five minutes, bro. The money was all right. No, you got to do what you got to do. I got to do, bro. And then tomorrow I'm hosting um, Quien Tiene Talento. It's like, who has talent? In Spanish? In Spanish. You know, I'm going to be there for booking two shows, doing two shows. Working you don't give eight, a fuck. You working eight Spanish hours. Side. You know, I'll do Spanish, you know. They pay They pay, They pay. pay just as well as English, you know. And um, I, I did my whole set in Spanish, you know. And I worked it out and over and over in my head. I translated my jokes on Google. I just typed up my jokes, translate to Spanish. <clears throat> and I did it, bro. How's the timing when you translate? Oh, I gotta Spanish. talk slower, man. I gotta talk really slow. Like I said, I said in Spanish. Um, I met this girl last night. She said, "I'll sleep at your house, but can't no sex." Anoche conocí una chica. Me dijo, "Duermo contigo, pero no hacemos el sexo." You know, same thing. Okay. And how you say I fucked her in the eyeball and <laughs> she made me green chili burritos for the fucking. You know what I'm saying? You better make me some fucking. <laughs> You know, I used to always hike the fool up, man. Like, I walk to Yodis, man. I'm going to be over there. Have my green burrito ready. And it was there. Huh? Good always, burrito. Always, always. <clears throat> That's my world, dog. A green chili burrito or a little rice and some beans to cut it. You can't get that no way. You know how you, know how you sleep after one of those? How? You pass like out, bro. Like a fucking mummy, dog. Your body can't handle it. It goes into protein and psychological shock and abuse, cocksucker. You that sleep, bro, like Palmer Newman and Kuhan Luke, bro. That's right. No man. more, boss. What do you got this week, does that? This week, bro, I'm doing um, a live podcast October 30 at the Nerd Melt with Bill Murray and um, Al Madrigal with the All Things Comedy Network. Okay. I'll be there October 30 at Nerd Melt. And um, I'm... I'm I'm taping a couple of podcasts for my podcast. I'm doing Emilio Rivera and Josh Nasher. Last week we had MMA fighter Mariano Mendoza. He's a big motherfucker, bro. He like the, he's considered the Mexican Debo. Pretty much most of my guests on my podcast are people I run into. You know, like if I see somebody, all right, this motherfucker used to be a pimp. Would be my podcast big time. He goes, all right, big time. So, or Wait, whatever. Where did you see Emilio at? Oh, uh, I haven't seen Emilio. I am. Um, I emailed him on on, his, on um, Twitter, and he said, yeah, bro, I'll do it. 
He's a great guy. And I had Armando Cosio and Pops, bro. How cool is Pops? Oh, man, man Pops. Let me tell you what, man. You know, you know who Pops is? No. He gave him a guest set in Bray. You didn't come oh. on. Oh, okay. The little handicap kid. Pops is the dude that... that um. When he was nine years old, he was on his way to a Little League game, and he got hit by a drunk driver. And he, oh, no. And he flew off of the motorcycle. So he, he talks weird now, but he recovered. You know, his speech is better. He does stand-up comedy. He's a fucking freak, you know? Somebody yeah. told me they took him to Mexico, and they got him a hooker, and he pops fucking just went No, nuts. man. Ar- he ha- walks with <clears> a <throat> limp, the whole fucking thing, Lee. So Ar- Armando, so this guy talks like this. Hey, bro, let me tell you, bro. He has a little arm like a waiter. So... <laughs> So this fool, man, on the show, Armando talks about because Pops go to a strip bar and they keep his phone. He has to go to the bank and come back and get um, lap dance money. So the, the fucking stripper called his house. I better have my money. So um, I better have my money. So Armando, you know, he told his wife, listen, I don't know how I know this, but what probably happened was he was getting a lap dance, two songs turned into six, he, he don't have enough money. They're holding his phone. And he's going to the ATM. And he's going to come back and pay these strippers. Get his phone back. Everything's going to be all right. How Mondo did not know this is going to happen, but that's what really happened. And this is this is a guy, man, who who li- who's living in a pension, bro. So I have them on my podcast, Pops. Armando Cosillo. I like Pops. Freaks. Pops, you know, he's ready to do a gig. He's ready to do anything, bro. He's ready to do a guest spot. He ready to um, hold a wire, bro, whatever you need. He had me really high, and I was in the green room, and this guy walked in, and I, I, didn't, I had never seen him before. But hey, bro. <laughs> yeah, and, but from the like green room, it sounded like he was doing well. Yeah, I he's just, doing good, bro. He had me really fucking high, he's, and this guy tell you, walked man, in. He's a soldier, bro. He's like, a soldier. He's like, a one time, guy. bro, I had no, nobody to take me to San Diego to do that fucking shitty-ass gig over there with that guy, Dustin Knapp, I think it was. I had nobody, bro. This motherfucker drove me, Okay. And his car is built for a handicapped person. Like the steering wheel, like the like the acceleration on the truck, it's on the gas, it's on a steering wheel. So to accelerate, he just holds it down with his palm. And the brakes are like are over here or on his foot, but the accelerator it's on like he can't switch feet from both feet, so the accelerator, it's on a steering wheel, and the brakes, in a, it's on a steering wheel. So it's built, and the, and the fucking steering wheel has a handle <laughs> like a bus driver, like a fucking doorknob. For real, the fucking steering wheel is built like a doorknob, all right, dog? So this motherfucker drove me like that, like a soldier, bro, to San Diego, bro. Bought him tacos, got him a fucking lap dance, paid him 60 bucks. Give him gas. He always calls me to wish me a good <laughs> luck on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Joey, I want to wish you good luck. You want to guess it? I'll be there. All right, bye. And we're talking about that on the show. That's how he does and it. I yeah. said, and I said, Pops don't ask for luck. For, nah, he always he calls don't ask for, and wishes you good luck. I don't need no luck. Yeah, right, Pops, pops Armando Cosio Jr., he don't ask for guest spots. He just he just sees it. Oh, pop. Joe Diaz live All podcast. All he needs to see is a fucking thing. And he Joe will, Diaz live podcast. Like. It's amazing. He will show up like a fucking. Thank you for coming on tonight. Oh, friend. thanks for having me. How are you me, doing? Man. Are you all right? I'm okay. You're right. See, you ain't. I took you to the deepest waters and you made it. I mean, you gotta see Lee when he eats it up. He looks up. <gasps> it tastes he so eats bad. It, it tastes fucking delicious. It's a new chef. Yeah, you man. Said he Every day it's a new nuts. chef. I want to thank On It. I want to thank Dollar Shave Club <sighs> and Hitty Sigs for helping us out and sponsoring us. Hit it, Lee. Hit it, Lee. Okay. Hit it, Lee. Where are you going to be? Are you going to be anywhere? I'm going to be in San Francisco next week, Helium, Portland the week after, and Helium, Philadelphia. Get your fucking tickets. Go to joeydiaz.net and see what's cracking lacking, bitches. I'll be at Tommy T's in Pleasanton next week. Awesome. Now that the show's over, don't forget to sign up for dollarshaveclub.com. Get high-quality razors sent to your door every month for a fraction of what you pay at retail. Go to dollarshaveclub.com forward slash church. Or just go to joeydiaz.net and click on the Dollar Shave Club banner. The show is also sponsored by onnit.com. Use code word, church, code word church to get 10% off of your order. And go to hitesigs.com and use code word Joey's Church to get 20% off, 20% off of your order. They have e-cigars, e-cigarettes. That proof is in the vape, and it's better tasting, longer lasting. <laughs>